Wacha Good Morning Zambia. My name is Chanda. Nominate me for Best Voiceover Artist at the Zikomo Awards. From Zambia to Africa to the world, we're going somewhere in Cameroon, somewhere in Ethiopia, somewhere in Kenya, somewhere in Uganda, somewhere in Rwanda, somewhere in South Africa. Help me to tell our story. Click on the link in the bio. Scroll down and click on Best Voiceover Artist of the Year. Enter your name and your email. Now enter my name, Chanda Mianda. Enter my country, Zambia. Click on Submit. Come on now. We're going somewhere at the Zikomo Awards. Dude, I, wait, I was actually asking, did you get paid off the, I, I hope they paid you. Off Amarula? Yeah. Well, we didn't, we didn't get, get, get any money, but there was an agreement that came up and uh, Amarula approached us to The drink how, itself, the drink. Yeah, yeah. Um, how we could partner and work together and have a couple of shows across the African continent in all the countries where they officially distribute and sell Amarula, the brand. How many countries is that? Mm, I think it was about 15, if I'm not mistaken. I think 15. So we agreed on about two events in each one of those countries. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, there was some extra money for licensing, to use the song, use the image. So it was like two deals in one. So one was for the events to perform in these countries at activations. Mm. And then two was for the use of the song, licensing of the song. Then number three was the use of my image. And yeah, I was gonna make a lot of money. You keep saying was, what happened? What, what went wrong? Um, they, they had uh, a challenge just towards the final part of our agreement, just before we signed up, uh, signed the contract. They had an issue with the line, gives me hands. Give me oh, hands Jesus. <laughs> That's it? Wait, do, do, it. do you know how much money he lost though? You, how how, how you much was this? A lot of money. A lot of money. Wait, how much is a lot? Almost like a million dollars. Dollars? Yeah. Like Ben? What? Yeah. <laughs> you lose like, a million was, dollars because of one line. One line. So Gives um, me hangover. Gives me hangover. Yeah, so I went into studio and changed the line because I'm, I'm looking at the amount of money that is on offer. And I'm like, I can't lose this money. It's a million dollars, bro. Yeah. So we went in the studio and changed the entire line, then sent it to them. They said, okay, cool, this is great. Sounds good, we're okay with it. Now, can you take down the song? And the the version with the hangover the song part. is, it should be taken down. I'm like thinking, and this is when the song- <laughs> You put it everywhere. Booming and mushrooming. We wrote to a couple of radio stations. Yo, can you please take down and- We've got a different version, version to give you. Yeah, like we've got a different version. It, it didn't work. That video as a song, <laughs> at least giving you close to a million dollars? Of course. Oh, it has? Man, why is your name? Man! <laughs> but don't worry, no, this, you this know, is, for me, the most interesting thing is how they followed you around in what, four countries? Yeah, so the first followed me in Kenya. The Maruda people? Yeah, yeah, I had a show in Kenya, then they flew to, to mm. they flew that side and we, we met. Then I had another show in Tanzania in Mwanza. Mm. Uh, and then they actually came um, and then uh, my manager had my late manager had a meeting with them in South Africa and then we had a meeting here in Zambia as well and this is when now we're about to conclude Sign the whole thing yeah so this is when they dropped it down and said okay because they asked me how much do you want so um, I remember I said I want 200,000 US dollars and someone said 200 what Are you crazy you take nothing. it up a little bit yeah and that's how we reached a million dollars then they said okay cool can we then split the one million dollars in like different segments you are going to perform in these countries at least twice uh, in one country um, and then you have these activations and then it came in the mechanical rights of the song using the song and then using my image so we came to this agreement about one million US dollars so yeah so that was our proposal to them for a million US dollars so wait, you, you were about to put pen to paper yeah when they say the when somebody part. says, wait a minute, <laughs> but does it not give you a hangover though? Yeah, but you make the drink look bad if you bring that up yeah, exactly. as a major. Yeah. Yeah. For, for for marketing purposes, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that wasn't. Don't talk about yeah. that, sir. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, but then we tried. Like, okay, listen, can we just take it down to two hundred thousand US dollars? Like, okay, but yeah, 
play, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a Peter Shaw crew. No, no, no. It, it was never You were this close to a million dollars, man. Have you ever, like, been in a room where you shake hands with people, like, okay, Deal is done. yeah, like, conversations, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to you with the final contract. I'm like, hey, perfect. One million dollars. Man, I told my manager, can you please get in touch with Chris Brown? We're about to do a song. <laughs> <laughs> then his team actually got back to us and told us how much you charge for a feature. Like, bro, and how much did you charge you? Uh, Chris Brown, yeah, he had charged us then about 50,000 US dollars, and that meant that's chunk change to a meter yeah, that you were getting, yeah, yeah. And how much mileage you're gonna get out of that's the thing, and so that's how we like we got in touch with Chris Brown, we got in touch with French Montana, uh, we got feedback from all these guys. For me, I was just like, that's it, I'm done. Z, wow. you have a representative, then yeah, man, you just didn't, yeah, that was my itch, man. Listening to the story gives me anxiety, bro, yeah, my God. <laughs> I feel I, I, I feel they, they they really believed in the song um, and where it was going and I think they also saw the potential that the song had to building the Amarula brand. Yeah. And yeah, but right. it did. Yeah, of course it, it did. did. Of yeah. course it did. And, and I know they just benefited just, just for free now. That's the thing because like the number of people who would tell me, listen, we started drinking Amarula because, because of you. Well, if we sing it, won't we... Old YouTube, like just no, no, no. Because I've always seen that shit. No, 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 <laughs> the algorithm really only pick up his voice. When you play, when you play the song, I get it. I'm the one No, it. like we can't, we can't play it on YouTube what? because of copyright infringement. Yeah, on our channel. On our wow. channel. Let's see. The, the, the moment that simply means I have to authorize for it. The moment, yeah. I, I'm trying to imagine is the second way they tell you it's not gonna happen after you've made budgets and you've seen your life change with a million dollars, man. Yeah. And no, you I like called your mama and said, I'm buying you a house. I know, you see what I mean? It was, it was, such, um, it was such a good deal that we said we're not going to tell anybody about until it. The, until, until the money's in the account. Yeah, no, until it happens. And Jeez. we believed so much that it was going to happen because there was nothing that was in the way. Nothing whatsoever. But just that one line. And the devil was like, hold my pitchfork. <laughs> this thing gives him over. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's that was the thing. Yeah, it's not like they hated the song or didn't like the artist. Just one line. It was just that line, like, listen, can we change? <sighs> uh, you know what? Let's go start the interview. Yeah, man. <laughs> Let's do it. Ah, not a problem. And action. You know, our guest today is an international artist and i'm not using international loosely because some people cross the border sing in the next country and call themselves international but this man actually has to get catch flights to get his gigs you know what i mean international superstar i don't even know if i should introduce him or he should just say his usual oh uh, the signature <laughs> should i leave it to you like my name is Robert. oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> no but it's good to actually yeah. have like an intro done you know because serious then, huh? yeah I you mean, know why not let me do this like a ZNBC presenter. OMG. Here we Reading go. off a script. Uh-huh. Today is an exciting day for us because we have on the show one of Zambia's finest singers. Wow. Roberto, the award-winning R&B, Afrobeats, and Afropop music superstar, singer, songwriter, producer. Guys, please make some noise. When you hear an intro that powerful, make some noise. Come on, man. Of course. Come of on, course. man. <laughs> you started calling yourself a superstar before you were even a superstar. You are a yeah. strong believer in what? The power of the word... It actually, what was that uh, about? it actually started off with my um, elder sister. Mm. Yeah, so um, you know how usually you're in a family where they kind of like tell you, listen, music is not going to take you places. But then she was <laughs> like, uh-huh. you remind me of Luther Vandross. One day you're going to be a superstar. What? And like for me, that was motivation because my mom wasn't really for the idea for us to do music and that sort of thing. Yeah. But then here was my sister who every time she'd hear me singing, she'd be like, 
you're gonna be a superstar one day and basically that's how you know the the name came up um i remembered it when i was looking for a title for my album and i was like thinking what am i gonna call this album so it's, I, it's like the first album no 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 no. Yeah. um that's like my most previous um full-length album oh ah, okay yeah so i was looking for a name and you know i was working on this particular album i thought i'd call it five or something like that because that would be like my fifth, fifth album. album yeah yeah and then uh i don't know you know just one of those moments where you're just like thinking and trying to work on stuff and then uh blah, 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 i was rec- working on a song and i was like i want to add a name that would be unique and boom there it was superstar Superstar. yeah nice one man you know i look at your musical journey yeah and at some point i used to call myself the hardest working man in show business yeah yeah i think you still are and i i found myself having so much work and i i took that down because you know words have so much power of course i found myself working so much mm-hmm. and making so little money <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. i had a conversation guess actually sat me guess group actually sat me down one day and said you know what with this money of yours the hardest working man in show business you're working too hard yeah align mm-hmm. alignment is how people how and i feel he put himself in yeah. that category of successful people which yeah. of course he deserves yeah oh hi Elson. we just started oh yeah. have you now yeah you're, you're not too late thank you so much <laughs> not bad yourself yeah so um he tells me alignment is what works okay so i dropped that and i started doing less work and just declare certain things in my life uh-huh. and th- you know things just started happening yeah without me doing much work okay it's almost like it was inversely proportional less work more money kind of thing and I, I, I i'm you. bringing that up because that sort of worked for you as well by making that declaration superstar and look at you yeah today, man. i mean sometimes you need to you need to live up to um the name and yeah ride with it because I've I've been in situations where you kind of like want to pat yourself on the back and there are people who are trying to tell you but why are you patting yourself on the back <laughs> but I think it's important time yeah. and time again for you to remind yourself who you are what you've done where you've come from because it's not everybody that you meet that will tell you wow you're good at what you're doing you need to remind yeah. yourself like yeah. well, you know what I'm good at this stuff even yeah. Tupac used to do that you know like you'd write something like damn I'm good so <laughs> I don't get why certain people when I try to do but, that but you, like, but you see you what know? you're doing there um <laughs> you mentioned Tupac yeah and I think it's bragging is something that's most associated to rappers and they they do it Man, all the time a, on their songs and you are a R&B. rapper in yeah, nigeria i was a rapper in nigeria yeah i was a rapper before i started singing serious yeah how come we don't i was a rapper before i started singing like singing for me was yeah. it came about because i was rejected somewhere on a project and it hurt me so bad because on I a rap like, rap project actually it wasn't a rap project as per se so there's this project that my brother was working on and yeah. then he managed to find his way to um start working on a project for some aids campaign so they were looking for toasters who are like dancehall artists and that sort of thing mm. and then they wanted to add on to r&b artists so there was this vacancy and there was this rapper who was available to you know try something and then yeah i tried and it was horrible the singing was bad bro they were just like you know we're going to try a different day So my brother came back and started telling me no you were rejected because of this this and that and that really cut deep and I went for a week just practicing I had a sore throat and that sort of thing but I said I'm going to try this. So for me I'm like a true testimony of someone who could not do something but then I taught myself let's you know what? put in some effort and you can you can get to do it. I still practice till today. Wait, you said you were rejected at rapping and then you went into singing? Did I hear that correctly? No, no, no. I I used to rap before. Uh-huh. And then there was this project that came up and they were looking for an R&B artist to be on it. Right. So I was available because I knew about the part that was needed, but mm. then I could not sing, you know what I mean? So right. then I was trying to they told you to fuck off basically, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. In, in like, softer words though. Of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like in a more diplomatic way you know what i mean yeah, so yeah yeah but then that was that wasn't so diplomatic for me and it yeah. didn't fit in well so i told myself you know what i'm going to prove it to you guys and i'm going to do something look at you today bro look at you today look at you now what's what's with what's with that men press bro you know what i've really, spoken to you about that I men know. press you know so what really uh, pisses me <laughs> off is your men press no okay, when, hold I, on. when i go are there lubricants in there <laughs> Oh, you're getting up on me now. <laughs> now we're just checking, man. We're just trying to find out. The language Johnson loves so much. Look at him. <laughs> OMG. Now we're just trying to find out. You know what really pisses me off when I visit somebody's house? Which brand is it? It's uh, the Lubes is what he's asking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not the bag. <laughs> I wouldn't know. You two would know. All right, cool. Yes, you're saying? You know what pisses me off when I visit somebody's house? And, oh, because I use an iPhone now. Wow. Okay. Johnson is very happy that I joined the club. Okay. Yeah. 
the cult. Yes, the cult. cult. Yes. I visit somebody's house and my battery is low and I can't charge my phone because all they have is Android chargers, Type C okay. and whatever. Yeah. So, and if I don't carry a bag with uh-huh. my charger in it, I usually forget the charger is there. Okay. You know what I mean? So mm. I, I figured it's better I move with my bag and, you know, move with my charger and whatever necessities. Yeah. In my little bag. So, hey man, it, could I, Switch what, actually told me this. Is that, is that cranberry? Yeah. That's cranberry into the... Oh, oh, fun, so fun, so. Could I, could I have an orange juice though? Yeah, yeah. So Switcher also carries a man bag. Yeah, damn. So what do you put there? Like, like your pads. For me, most. <laughs> you just came here to be a dick today. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, now nah, lose, to... lose wow. that shit, you... please. No, I'm not. Wow. Listen. Yeah, the same. I have orange juice as well. Yeah. Man, I'm starting to feel like an outsider in this journey. It's like orange juice, orange juice, orange juice, <laughs> juice freeze its ice blocks. I know, right? Hennessy. <laughs> okay. No, you, you're the um, you're the cooler one of us here, bro. Okay. Yeah. Nobody here has got a hit song. Damn. So be different. <laughs> <laughs> stand out. Yeah. I, I mean, he tried to stand out with that goddamn man press. And I'm standing out. Uh huh. I think that's what pissing off Elsa off right now. Why that you're stand- oh, yeah. Fam, listen, stand out as much as you want. Thank you. With that much. man press. Thank you. I'm so yeah. humble. Yeah. yeah. Roberto, you mentioned you went to that, uh, was it an audition, some competition of some sort where you were? It wasn't really like an audition yeah. as per se, but it was a project that my brother was working on with some colleagues. And there was like this whole lineup that they wanted because of the message, that how they wanted it to be put right. across. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't like an audition as per se. And to be honest with you, I don't think I've actually ever auditioned for anything mm. in my life yet. So for me, it's just been work, work and just work. I, I went back to that because you mentioned your brother. Yeah. Did you guys grow up in like a musical family? Was, yeah, we did. Has it always been, you know, musical? Because I know you, there's two superstars in the family. General yeah. Ozzy, then there's you. Yeah. And General Ozzy, of course, sort of led the way for you, paved the way for you, you know, in a way. Yeah, somehow, yeah. Yeah, but what we, was it like growing up in your home? Were you guys always singing and toasting? Well, he was more of... Like, the, the funny thing is when we were growing up, people knew me as the artist and then he wanted to shy away from everything. Mm. Um, so like when we like, were in school... It was Roberto organizing this, uh, this and that. I, I was the guy organizing the parties, making sure the sound system is okay. I'll steal the system from home and take it to our school <laughs> just for like parties and that sort of thing. What, was it like the home system? Yeah. We had these techniques, you know, like those oh, techniques crap, the, that I've got. The five CD changer. All that oh, stuff, crap, man. Oh, oh, that damn. Stuff. Time changes. Eh? You had a soft life growing up, huh? Yeah, man. You Thanks know what I like man. about that? Yeah. Is every other artist uh-huh. comes up with this bullshit ass story about how they the used struggle. to... Yeah, how they were <laughs> raped by their uncle and used to like sing in the rain and walk for 85 kilometers. What is, it? Uh-huh. What is this guy saying about Bobby Easton's life? Oh ah. man, you know was he raped by his uncle? No, walking, walking through the rain. What, which episode is that where the guy spoke about walking through the rain? To I think it was Slap. Slap, slap D. It was Slap, yeah. Yeah, slap D. yeah, but they always come up with like some, some sobby ass story. they're just story. telling their truth, man. I don't know. I don't know about yeah. that. But anyway, he grew up soft. Technics. Yeah, and, 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 and I like that. He says, no, I didn't, I didn't have to. Technics was struggle. like 3 million kwacha eh? before rebasing. Oh. Then, remember how then it was like one of the most expensive yeah, uh, sound, home, sound, yeah. home sound systems then? Oh, yeah. 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 And a good sound, though. Very good sound. Yeah. yeah. So basically, we grew up in a musical home because my dad was like a professional artist. You would play guitar and percussions. Mm. Then my mom, same thing. So. You know, like where you're growing up, it's music everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's a bit difficult for me to pinpoint and say, when did I really like fall in love with music? Yeah. But it's like you grow up and there's music everywhere. Around whatever. you. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it was a question of when, you know, do you want to go pro and that sort of thing. So when I relocated and went to South Africa, that's when it was just like, all right, here we go. So how how many siblings have you got? There were nine of us, but now we're just like four remaining. Jesus. Yeah. Nine. To yeah. four. Yeah. You lost out on five. five. Yep. Yeah. I'm impressed you did the math there quickly. Huh? Yeah, I didn't need an <laughs> abacus too. Did you know that? <laughs> Very quick. Quick math. With me, uh, you're improving in this area. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're Thank welcome, you. Can bro. I put this here? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. By all means. Sure. So, uh, how many? Of but you, that, that's like, tragic, though. Sorry. Yeah. I'm saying that's yeah. tragic. Did, yeah. did Did you guys ever think of therapy? I mean, I'm thinking losing five siblings. It's, losing one is. Yeah, it's, it's enough, you know, but having five people that are very close to you, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing. And because the first one in our family was a journalist, he used to work for ZNBC. Mm. Um, so you do radio and TV. Then the Wait, third one, one is this? Ruben Bander. Benes' dad. 
Ah. Yeah. Right. So, you don't know him, do you? No, I do. I know, I know Ben. Okay. <laughs> you're on Facebook, you know Ben. If you're on Twitter, you'd know Ben. Exactly. So thanks a lot, boss. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, and besides, you're a uh, present, TV presenter as well. So pretty yeah. much followed in dad's footsteps. Then the third born, is it the third or fourth born in our family was a DJ, like a proper, proper DJ. That's what, all musical, eh? Yeah. So <coughs> the days of Valentino's back in the days here, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Even when Big Bite opened in Kawe a long time ago, he was one of the DJs. So he'd pretty much like travel between cities. Um, so yeah, it, it was just records, cassettes at home. Then my dad would, every time he travels out of the country, he'd always bring like new music yeah. and that sort of thing. So it was really just like music every single day. By the way, we are shooting this episode from Tri Lounge. This is part of arcades, right? Yeah, at arcades. Top Star Building, first floor. You can bring your family here, bring the crew, bring the girlfriends, bring the wives. <laughs> Very nice place to chill. And when the VIP lounge section right now, you can tell from the good leather. Yeah. And uh, the food here is amazing. I know you've tried the food because we're yeah, talking about you being here. Yeah, I tried it out. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. Let me, let me you can just zoom into this delicious looking food. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. So try lounge. You can bring your family here. So mm. it's, you know, weekends, a good place to chill as well. Is there even anything like weekends in Osaka? It bangs every day. So you can come we here for We are chill. tapping into that East African culture, man. Where Monday every to Monday, day. everybody's party. But one thing I the found. The president said this party after party. <laughs> did you see that clip? I did. I saw it and I'm like thinking to myself, ooh, okay. I don't know how many people will actually abide to that, but I think Zambians naturally just love to have a good time and chill and vibe. So, yeah. If it's not going out, you're probably going to do it at home. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Um, I lived in Akonde for three years, so I consumed a lot of Tanzanian entertainment at the border there. Oh, oh we are talking about the border earlier, actually. Did you, did you guys check out the news uh, on Monday? Oh, yeah. The, they are actually Ethiopian. Seven guys? Oh, yeah, I saw that. The guys found that were found dead. dead. Found dead, yeah. That was so tragic. Stab wounds. He was telling me this. Yeah. yeah. It's like they were actually stabbed because they're talking about how they all had like serious bruises. Yeah, and, and like sharp objects that were used the to... The fuck? That was... That's, Wait, that's hold on. Doing. So, I, I, we, we spoke about this with Kalenga. Were they all found in the same area? Um, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much in, the, in some bush. So, they yeah. found the first body and then was... The, the person was uh, going out to seek help or to, and then they six, found another body. Bodies, then yeah. when the other people came through to then they found, they found So they were body. killed at the same time? It looks like they were Pretty killed much. from some other place. And, and then, then, then they just yeah. dumped there yeah. yeah, because um, there's not much blood at the site where they were found. Yeah, so meaning the, the wounds they have, there should have been more blood in that scenery. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Vicinity, sorry. But have you noticed yeah. though that we've had so many cases of Guys from Somalia and the likes, you know, kind of like just passing through Zambia, traveling either to South Africa and that sort of thing. Yeah. And they move in like huge numbers, like 20, 15. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of like so, whole caravans of Yeah. Them. So maybe this could have been like a deal gone wrong where money was expected, yeah. like pay us this much and we'll transport you this side. I don't know. Maybe oh. that's what happened. Oh, maybe. right. Probably. Yeah. And then they didn't. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just speculating. Now, of course, we're just speculating. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking because that number of people. Yeah. And then from right. the same, something is not right. The suspicion is that they could have been killed from across the border and then dumped on what on in Tanzania? Tanzania. Yeah, could be allegedly anyway. But you so, know, you know how the crime in Tanzania is extremely low. I mean, you can't even steal there. Um, you know, you know this. Yeah, I, I, I live. You've like, had a, yeah, you, you, you can't steal. But I'm suspecting this was just a deal gone bad. Yeah, these guys probably just didn't have the money to pay for. But then something. again, when it comes to killings, like I said, I lived uh, in Nakonde, right by the border. And you're telling me how years. girls, yeah, or children, because like, I, I moved to Lusaka from Nakonde when last year, and the three years we spent there, mm-hmm. like usually this time of the year between September to December, yeah. there are a lot of killings. They were when I was there anyway. Ah, usually little so girls. So it's common, right? It's common there. Usually little girls, and you'd find them with missing body parts. I was about to ask these missing, people, breast missing. How, how does a vagina go missing, bro? Dude, Damn, you find chopped off, like the vagina how? sliced off. For what? How? Rituals. It's a hole. Oh, how do you, how does a hole oh, go okay, The flesh around the vagina gone for rituals. On my lips. Breasts. Right. So you should, yeah, you the should breasts, like, I can understand how they're missing. How does a vagina go missing? It's like... Okay. I wouldn't know how to explain the whole thing, but, you know, like... What did you call it? Again? What, the malefe? <laughs> okay. That's the only thing you can cut off, no? Well, pretty much. Breasts and tongues, <sighs> sometimes eyes. That would happen a lot. We'd hear that a whole lot across the you border. You think someone would cut off... But anyways... <clears throat> no, say it, no, say it. Say it. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I'm good. Roberto, you know... Why are you trying to recruit me? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> this, this is a safe space. There's a lady who was sitting there. 
Is that the reason why you're a little uneasy? Who? I don't know. There was a lady that was sitting. No, I didn't see her. Gentlemen, are you going to taste his food or not? <laughs> or has the topic become a little disgusting? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll taste we it. will. The funny thing about the border, though. Yeah. You can cross the border. It's the most <laughs> porous yes, border in the about this. world. Which in Nakonde? Yes. Yes. You're, you're, dude, like right now, I'll be in Nakonde and I'll just think, you know what, let me go do a beer. You, you just I'll walk. Let me go drink a beer. Kind of like you're walking across, across the street. It, but isn't it the same even like um, in Chirundu? No. You leave no, ID, Chirundu, it, it, and whatever, in living centers. No, in, in Chirundu, can, well, even, even um, Siavonga, yeah. on the dem wall, yeah. Yeah. you can just walk across to Zim. Yeah, but I was saying that. to Kalenga, the one thing, the one thing <laughs> that they will not accept <laughs> plastic bags. Plastic. Where? In Tanzania? Yeah. At the border. Dude, I used to wow. go to Tanzania every day. How come day I didn't know about that? Driving. Yeah. If I would walk or drive. Yeah. But, but I know about uh, in Rwanda, it's the same thing. Because the first time that I traveled there. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, the first, that was 2015 when I traveled there. So, you know, like where you have, you put your shoes like in a plastic in bag. A plastic you don't want them to mess up with other stuff. Mm. Then we get there, then someone says, oh, you have to... Leave the plastic bag. Leave the leave plastic. plastic. I'm like, why? Like, it's not permitted. So I mean, you could, yeah. you could literally... <laughs> I'm repeating the same joke I said. You could literally kill somebody. <laughs> put put them in the a plastic body bag. <laughs> in a plastic bag. That's how they get you. Oh, man. <laughs> if you wrap the body in the blanket, they'll be like, ah, you can go. Yeah. Snap. <laughs> I'm sure you can have a gun on the dashboard and be like, okay. Yeah. But a oh, plastic no. bag. <laughs> but if the gun is on a plastic bag, yeah, your wife yeah, is gone. gone. <laughs> And the funny thing, Vijay, you know, you've never been there before. No. We would do, like, with my family, we would do most of our shopping on the Tanzanian side when we live in the Conde. You would drive to the gate. Like, there's so many ways to get into Tanzania. It's not strict. Like, you can go club. Yeah, that much I know. Yeah. Tanzania is going to live across the border. Yeah. Yeah. A lot now, of when you're driving, are... you have to go through the gate, uh-huh. which the Tanzanians have to open for you, the Tanzanian gods. Before they open the gate, they're going to search your car thoroughly for a plastic bag. <laughs> If I'm doesn't going shopping three times, I will get searched three times. Yep, and once it happens, nothing. I did shopping on the Zambian side, and I put groceries in a plastic bag, and I cross, and I go to the border, and I forgot about the plastic bag in the back seat. Yo, should have seen the guy's eyes light up when he saw the plastic bag. Wow. They came round the car with guns over a plastic bag. They told me to get out of the car, and they almost bag. put cuffs on me, and over they said, "Look, there's two bag. options here: over a plastic bag." No, I keep adding bag. the ad libs. No, so like, so like as you, voiceover yes, kind yes, of. So as you say, you <laughs> so <laughs> this guy with a shotgun comes to my side of the. He tells me to open, open the door, and oh, you know he starts, you know, uh, waving handcuffs in front of me, and he says, mm. like, "There's two ways we can do this. Over a plastic bag. You either pay us fifty thousand shilling, or we lock you up. Over a plastic. And bag. there's very. It's this fast track court in Tanzania. You can go to jail like instant. Yeah. Over okay. a plastic bag. Over a plastic bag. Man. You can go to a jail cell at twelve. 13, you've been caught. By 1330, you're sentenced. Probably even given a three-month sentence. Oh, by a plastic bag. Oh, by a plastic bag. Oh, and, the way, and the way <clears throat> shops here are just like handing out plastic bags like Dude. STIs. <laughs> I mean, I you go... <laughs> I wouldn't know about that. So no? I, I paid the 15,000 shilling fine. That. Which is like 500 kwacha. I had yeah. to pay the fine, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's crazy up there. But there are pretty beautiful women in Tanzania. I have to agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't agree Roberto with is about. remaining silent in this. I don't even understand why you guys want me to be a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is a trap, man. It sounds like a trap. I don't know what you guys are trying to do, but it sounds like a trap. You don't need did, to comment. We're back to the issue anyway. We're discussing Roberto. Did, how much influence did your brother have on you? Especially that he blew up before you. Like early 2000s, we had... Yeah, yeah. No, quite a bit. Like, okay. he, yeah, those... I feel like there was more pressure than influence, to be honest, because mm. a lot of people felt, okay, this is just, who's this, who's this guy? And the thing is, um, I just spent like, what, 10 years in South Africa, so I just came back. And yes, my music was all in English mm. because I was pretty much just trying to break into the mainstream market in, in South Africa. We'd only started having a couple of gigs with some of my friends. So when I came here, my music, of course, was pre-designed for the market that I was basically living in, which is South Africa. So when I came here, I found those Hamor, those Tai Two, there's Chameleon. It's just like a whole Exile. different, yeah. There's yeah. like a different ball game altogether. Um, so to try and fit in was really difficult and re- pretty tough. I was denied a lot of interviews. Um, I went to certain TV stations on more than nine occasions, and I was never granted interviews. So, In Zambia, yeah, I think I was one of those people. Who TV stations, interviews. there aren't too many. Is that a <laughs> <laughs> No, but I think we're cool now. Like. I, I'm I'm pretty cool with with you know with a lot of people now. Um, 
the thing is, I want to believe that it was more like, who is this guy that probably just wants to sound like the brother? You get it? And even when I released my you first song... You were the chef 187 of the family. Yeah, bro. <laughs> when my kid was already born. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, so you... It's almost like, dude, your brother is already big. What do you want? Yeah. Like, who are you? And I'm like, look, my music is different from what my brother is doing, but that didn't fit in well. And yeah. But along the way, yeah, man, one song dropped. They're like, okay, I think it's good. Second song dropped. Like, okay, listen, this guy is just all his brother. Your, your first big song was well, Some People They Wonder, Wonder. That wasn't the one. Which one? Operator. Oh, which one is Operator? This song called Operator. Oh, and, and you are the DJ in this. Oh, yeah. The yeah. title. Guys, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the title. I can't yeah. remember the title, but I know the song, yeah. That was like my first big song. I remember I took it to a certain radio station. Went nuts with that song. Yeah, yeah, certain radio station DJ told me, listen, if this song is not nice, don't ever come here again. <laughs> Who was it? <clears throat> no names mentioned. Tony Roller Coaster? No, no, no. Okay, no. which year was it? I don't know. Actually, uh, me and Tony actually started off on a very bad foot. That's why it brought him not up. In t- no, no, no. He yeah. was not the one that said that, but it took my brother to actually call him because we were staying in Avondale and there was, that's the time that the third were blowing up and Damiano and that sort of thing and we would listen to Z626 on radio. Wait, wait which, year, which year is this? This is 2008. 2007, actually. And this guy was like a hot radio DJ then? Yes. Okay, when I mentioned his name, just blink. Which seeing one? as you don't want to expose him. Which one? You the said one? you're not going to mention his name? Or oh, the one that told me like... It, if the song is not good, don't yeah. bring it back. No, no, no. It wasn't even on Hot FM. It was a different radio station. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I know all the guys who are hot. <laughs> when I mention the name, just blink. <laughs> Bruh, you try to... Listen, I've recovered. <laughs> I'm in good books with a lot of people. I don't even want to start up any play, issues. Why, why, are you, why, are you, why are you setting the guy up, man? I know, right? Putting me in the tight I'm corner. Just, I'm, just I'm already in the corner, him, but how, how far back do you want me to go? <laughs> anyway, you your story, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I remember, like, I, I told my brother, say, do you know that my music does not play on this guy's show? And he's like, who? Tony? Uh, yeah. He's like, hold on. Pick up the phone and called him. Yeah. Do you have my brother's song? Hey, I need an eye. <laughs> he's like, can you please help the young guy come up? And that was the first time I heard my song play. The general spoke. He spoke. And because they were like really, really good friends. He tried to take so, a soldier. Damn. Yeah. But it was really, really difficult for me to break into the market. Like yeah. really, really tough. A lot of people think it was easy. But I feel like it was a big challenge having a big brother who was already like a big artist because yeah. then you're just like in his shadows. You get mm. it? People don't want to mention your name. They just say, oh, this is Ozzy's young brother. Ah, oh, this is Ozzy's young, young brother. And that's why I said, you know what? I have a And you'd be there in the background like, my name is Robert. If anything, that is the reason why I just said, you know what? Yeah. People need to know who I am. I like, I need to put a, foot, a footprint, a foot stamp in my my music and that's how every song I just say my name is Roberto kind of like Jason Derulo exactly thank you very much if anything Jason Derulo is my brother to be honest with you mm. because I've heard and I've seen all sorts of ridic- ridiculous stories why do you keep mentioning your name like dude the minute my song plays in Mexico do you know who they like do, do they know me they need to know who it is and like mm. I need to introduce myself the minute you go somewhere what's the first thing you do you introduce yourself so every time I record a song, I think of new people that are only getting to know about me. So why should I deprive myself and my music from growing and reaching certain I places? That. I love that. If just because I need to satisfy three people who have... Uh, no, no, no. I and and, and there's, there's some arrogance in you assuming that now everybody knows who you are. That is the thing. Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every time thing. your song plays in, um, on radio, there is somebody who is hearing it for the first time, who is hearing Thank off you. you for the first time. Thank you. That's true. And generations that you look, man, like if you look back at what music 15 years ago, yeah, let's let's pick out, say, for example, an artist like Chameleon, right? The people that were listening to Chameleon's music and calling in on radio stations voting for his mm. music are probably doing something else right now. Mm. They're either farmers or they have family commitments and that sort of thing. There's a new generation now. Mm. So you cannot leave thinking, oh, okay, man, people are still gonna vote for me. Like you need to keep reinventing yourself year in and year out. You get mm. what I mean? And there are new fans that you tap into every year. So you just can't be in a comfort zone all the time. And for me, I refuse to be that type of person. You stopped blowing up 2008, 9, 10, 11-ish. Mm-hmm. 2012, I think you start heading towards your peak. Yeah. But at this point, Ozzy is sort of, you know... Cooling off. Cooling off. Has there ever been, like, you know, competition in the family, kind of? You know, like... Huh... Not that he's ever come to me and said it directly, <laughs> but I do know yeah. some people that have wanted us to kind of like believe that, you know. Mm. <clears throat> the first time I went to Rwanda was because of Ozzy. 
The first oh, time right. I went to Uganda was because of Ozzy. I was his backing artist. I used to back him. So you cannot bite the hand that feeds you. He pretty much introduced me to a lot of people. People that have helped me to date were his close friends. Mm-hmm. You get it? Yeah. So to try and bring about competition between me and him, for me, is a non-starter. I, and I know a lot of people have blood, tried man. to... It's blood. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have tried to bring about some tension between me and him. I have friends who will be like, no, we heard Ozzy. He was saying that, you know, you've become selfish, blah, blah, blah. I'm like thinking, you know what? You guys can try all you want, but that's my brother. We might have disagreements here and there, but that's family. That's blood. I always look out for him. Um, the time that I put him on the African woman song, they're like, but why do you keep putting your brother on such songs? I'm like, do you know how many times he put me on? Mm. You get my point. So why should I, if I've got an opportunity to put on somebody, why should I? live out my brother i'm gonna put everybody on but then why should somebody have a challenge or a problem because i put my brother on yeah, yeah it doesn't work like that and there's like there's i think almost every song of yours has a <clears throat> nod to the relationship that you have with your brother it's a brother exactly yeah. it's a brotherhood thing that's all his voice yeah oh ah, yeah no i picked that up yeah yeah and then <laughs> it's mosquitoes in this joint eh mm. is it just me <laughs> it's a window my man you're not close i think, I think you know i close the window <laughs> Officially, he agrees. <laughs> yeah, eventually I had to. Yeah. Yeah, so the brotherhood thing, thing, I, I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm still a big fan of Ozzy. Is he still doing the restaurant thing? No, 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 no. Um, the place where they were operating from was sold off. So Damn. the person that bought it wanted to turn it into something else. A lodge, maybe? Ah, not really. Because it's, it's like an office there. park. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. Not really an office park, but they just wanted to rent out most of the rooms, mm. office activities. So we're getting... Towards uh, 2015 in your journey, then you've already declared yourself a superstar, but you're not really a superstar until I'm a ruler hit, man. Yeah. Like, how much of your life changed with that song? Man, I'm still getting paid off that song. I know, I I've know. I've built houses off that song. DJs as far as the North Pole, yeah. Sweden, Netherlands, <laughs> remix that song. I, I can't yeah. even count the number of times I've seen think, that song. I think I've counted almost about 15 different versions of that song. Wow. 50? Yeah. 15. 15. And are you getting paid off each variation? Yeah, of course. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, because I mean, the, the system up north, it, well, in the Western world is more organized. You're going to get paid with every play, right? Man, I remember when I just uh, started uploading my music on yeah. uh, a platform called TuneCore. That was 2013, somewhere there. 2012, 2013. And it was fairly new to me. I remember checking my account to be like $1, $2. <laughs> then I put out that song. I would not lie to you. Yeah. I forgot about all that. Then one day I was just like, wait a minute. TuneCore. What's my password? Password check, failed. Password check, clicked on forgot password, reset. Boom. I was just like, wait a minute, what? How much was there? <laughs> I called my wife and said, wait, are you <laughs> seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> She's like, what's this? I'm like, can you see what I'm seeing? And they're like, all oh, these zeros. I was like, And what it. were you saying? How many zeros were there? I think I'd made over about, just within the first six months, mm-hmm. We had done almost ten thousand dollars plus. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. What's the first thing you bought? Do you remember? Um This is all from Amarula, just one song. One song. Right. One song. And um they were aware, like, damn, okay, what's gonna happen? And I love shoes, it's like first things first. <laughs> 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 we gotta get them shoes. <laughs> um but I remember we went out, we we got a number of things. My wife is more of a She's she like literally just quenches your excitement. Like <laughs> I've got this money. Like okay, hold on. Calm down. We have A, B, C, and D. We'll to go in for. the next two days. I'm like two days. We got the money. Like and can we do do this and now? The dollar rate was high. Oh then. man, of course, man. Yeah. Like it was it was crazy. Like it was crazy money. I had never touched that much money off a song. Hence, I'm wow. saying there was just like two dollars, three dollars, and that sort of thing. And the, here's this one song, and it's giving me all this money. You get it. Yeah. And then there were all these shows that were coming up. And then we traveled to Cape Town. I performed in Cape Town for the smallest crowd and I made the most money in 15 minutes in my entire career. So, yeah, there was a period when it's just money everywhere, money everywhere, money every, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. But then I've, I feel like as I passed that period where you are so excited about stuff that you just bulk by and as impulse by, you do this, go this side. I'll just fly out to go this side. At, at some point, I probably just used to spend like two days at home. I'll be coming from SA, boom, I spend one day, go this side. There was a day I spent, I arrived around 9 and by 19. PM or AM? AM. Mm-hmm. Um, by 
7 p.m. in the evening, I was out. So my life was like that. How, 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 how much of a toll did that take on your marriage, though? Um, not much, because I think the first few days we used to travel together a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we used to travel together a lot. And then, as per usual, there are always critics. Why is the wife always following him? Can't you just let the man be? Eh. <laughs> I'm like, this is my wife. For yeah. goodness sake. This is like yeah. my best friend. And, you know, like we make decisions together and that sort of thing. And, you know, people always want to dive into other people's business. Like, yeah. They yeah, always that's... want to be in your business. Mm. The minute you're close to your wife, eh, it's a, they're it's always together. She the minute you give are him not, space. Yes. he wants to cheat. Exactly. And it, that's what I'm saying. Like, people are never really truly satisfied with whatever it is that you're doing. Mm. They always want to have a say in something. You get it. And not until she started school, then everything kind of like toned down. People thought, oh, okay, I've put her in her place, as they would say. Oh, no, he's finally put her in a place. No, no, no. It was school um, and that sort of thing. So she went into school and it was a bit difficult to travel. Of course, we travel time and time again. But yeah, that was what it, that's what it was. So I, was, I, I wouldn't say it really took a toll on my marriage now. You know how much this man travels, man? No. You want to tell us? <laughs> I think I, 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 if he says it, maybe it'll look like he's bragging. Oh my God. We've been trying to get him on this show for the longest time. And almost every time we talk, I'll try to call him on his 097. What's up? Oh, bro. Sorry. I'm, I'm not in the country right now. Try me next week, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, crap. I'm just flying out. Uh, just try this maybe next week. No, I just got back. I'm a bit tired. Can we? Man, man's got to stay busy. Man's got to eat. Yeah. You know, you know. No, I'm just saying, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with how much traveling is doing. Absolutely. For a Zambian artist, this is rare. Mm. Of course. You know what I mean? Flies and more than the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the craziest thing, again, is talk to, talk to Bobby East and, um, and Iris, bring out the sex tape. People are like, oh, no, that's old. Move on. We talk to Roberto, mention an old song. Now that's okay. People have to choose their battles. <laughs> are we talking about old shit or not? <laughs> What are you trying to say? I know, right? Nothing. <laughs> are you going to eat, dude? Are you going to eat? And Man, if you, you guys, are, which one are you going to choose? Um, <clears throat> okay, I don't want, I'm not so much of a heavy. Can I do the salad? Sure. All right, cool. I was hoping yeah. you'd choose that. No problem. <laughs> Man, I don't think I'm coming to your home. Elsa, you, you pick that one? No, 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 no. I'll do the salad. No, you eat biscuits. That's what you will eat. Yeah? Could I have um, a Martin. So they started dressing here. Yes, 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 yes. I need that. Definitely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. And this nigga just walks off. Just like we're not in the middle of a goddamn podcast. I want to share. What, with your girlfriend? Now, Martin, Martin was looking a little too hungry in that corner, man. Oh, you're giving him some, some food? Yeah. Oh, cool. Awesome. My wife has cooked, so I'll be home soon. Also in country late. I cannot. <laughs> Why do you yeah. think I'm sorry now? That's, that's what I'm saying. Roberto, as we chew. Yeah. Um, I was looking at this media uh, press statement yeah. in 2020 in which you announced that you had been signed to Ziki Digital Media, yeah. which is home to some of Africa's biggest stars like Diamond Platinum's, mm-hmm. Stone Boy. <clears throat> yep. I'm curious. Why didn't you get signed to a local label though? Um... <laughs> Firstly, I have my own label with Aussie. Brother Uding. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we put together some pretty decent music that we've released, you know, mm-hmm. in the past. Not to say that I'm I'm not interested in working with anybody else. Um, however, sometimes some of the offers that come up are really not in the direction that I want to kind of like take my career in my music. So it's more of how are they benefiting than how am I benefiting and pushing my career forward? Because, for example, the time that we released Amarula, do you know how many people asked to be on that song? Um, even just like a month ago, the someone who was asking, like an artist from Congo, like, can I remix Amarula? I said, why? And this is an artist who's fairly new. I, for me, I don't think I see anybody else who is new um, jumping on that song. Mm-hmm. I feel like the song has really sold itself so well that it deserves to have an artist who is global big. Like Bruna Boy? Probably. But my eyes are like Chris Brown. You know? <laughs> no, I'm not joking. If today Chris Brown said, can we do this remix? I, I'll be like, say no more. <laughs> Let me Let's send you the this. stems. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because 
I feel like the song has done so well. It deserves an artist that will push it forward, not an artist that just wants to benefit off it. Because if you go to different countries right now and you play that song, there are people that know it. So why should I put an artist that is barely known in Zambia on that song? Where, where is it going? Without any hard feelings or without taking away anything. But I feel like that song, if you had to remix that song, it deserves somebody that is just going to take it to the next level. And for mm. me, that's what I want to do. Do you so, own it? 100%. That's good. Produced it, wrote it, distributed it, published Amazing. it, everything. I, I know some people will think it's a very dumb question of me asking if you own it. Mm. But don't realize how a lot of the artists, mechanics of the industry, yes, though. Right. Don't own their. Yeah. Like the way Cisco doesn't own his own, own hit song, Thong Song. Yeah. Snoop Dogg, until recently, yeah. didn't, didn't own, own his cat. Exactly. Until he bought oh, yeah. the, yeah, the until whole record bought, label. Uh, yeah. Death Row. Um, Death, Death Row. Yeah. 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 But it's sad for Cisco, though. You have such a hit song and then you just lose it to a. <laughs> just because of the line. Well, because of one line, yeah. So sad, though. Or the living like living like Ricky, Ricky Martin. Martin. Ricky Martin we were speaking about sodomy in the in the previous. <laughs> oh my gosh! Man. Episode. <laughs> what? <laughs> I give up. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, well, well, why are you laughing though? <laughs> why are we talking about sodomy? I know, right? You just brought it up, like no, because you mentioned Ricky Martin. So we're just going to think so about what Ricky music. Martin done. You do not think of sodomy when you think of Ringy Martin? No, no I think of an artist. Oh, yeah, so apparently you're sodomizing his cousin. Ah, oh, snap. No. Allegedly, yeah. Serious? Yes. A family wow. member. He was? Yeah. What hey, we forgot. So come we, here, we let, me live, to... let me <laughs> live in La Vida, look. So. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a problem, I swear. So the previous episode, we had uh, Simon. <laughs> um, Lenga Mula. Okay. And, and we're speaking about sodomy. You know the craziest thing about that? And. There were these stories of kids mm-hmm. that, like, this child who was sodomized by, like, 15-year-olds. I'm sure you heard about that story, right? Yes. You know that's exactly what happened to Kevin Spacey? Kevin. House of Cards? Yeah, mm-hmm. House of Cards, Superman. Yeah. yeah. He was sodomized by a family member, and he grew up instead of doing exactly the same thing. R. Kelly, though, wasn't sodomized, but he was raped by an older woman, and he began repeating the same cycle, too. I don't know if prison would actually fix a problem that R. Kelly has. Oh, He's in the man. right place for it. <laughs> <laughs> so are they trying to say he's the one that distributes the soap? <laughs> right? Don't drop the soap, bro. <laughs> I think Roberto, like, maybe first we'll finish talking about Amarula and mm. how it just went, man. I, I know financially that's what it did to you, but yeah. as an individual, mm. how much changed in you? Like, how did you view yourself after that? It changed everything, to be honest with yeah. you. <clears throat> it did. Um, I'm one person that loves to research a lot on stuff, but along the way, I feel like Amarula opened more doors for me to know more about the industry and just the mechanism and a lot of a lot of technical issues and this and that that when i started implementing certain principles or values mm. people called me big headed guy i remember when i said i don't want anybody to upload my music on any youtube channel and on any blog do you know how many people say they'll not upload my music and play my music mm. a lot of people Oh, he's become big-headed because he's got this song, this and that, blah, blah, so blah, blah, you, blah. So you didn't even go on those funny websites we no, had back no, no, then, no, no, no. com and them? Well, initially I was yeah. on those platforms. But then after I started seeing the figures coming in, mm. you get it? I was yeah. like, wait a minute. I'm not getting paid on these, these platforms. Mm. So the more that my music is being distributed on these other free platforms, I'm not going to be seeing this money. Mm. So I said, I don't want anybody to upload my music a, B, C, D. Oh, man. This is complicated. Did you have to sue a couple of people? Not really. Almost. But of course, there are a couple of people that we wrote to and, you know, mm. because, yeah, there are certain people who just feel like, nah, who is he? You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. So a, peop- a couple, number of people, of course, just looked at me in a certain type of way. Uh, we received some sort of negative backlash and that sort of thing. And then, boom, all of a sudden, after people started seeing certain things, they're like, okay, <clears throat> subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, do not blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you see? And that's the thing. A lot of people wanted to make me look like this evil person who is so selfish and so self-centered without realizing or even coming to me and asking me, why are you doing this? What, what are the benefits of 
you uploading your music onto certain platforms. There are certain people who I know you've had on this platform mm. that brag about how they upload their music and everything else, but they will not tell you where they got that information from. But I'm okay with it. I'm all right with it. I'm okay with it. You but these are people that will come, that, the people that would come to me and ask about certain things, but that's who I am. I, I assist people. I go out and help people. Mm. You get you get my yeah. point. That's that's who I am. And there are others that always want to make me look like the bad guy because you want to win favor and sympathy. I'm like, bullshit. That's that's not right. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. If I'm gonna help you, I'm helping you as a friend. You get it. Whether you wanna mention me or talk talk about me in a certain type of way, that's fine. But don't go out there and make me look like the bad guy. You get my point? Because if I know something, I should be able to share it with you yeah. and you will share it with somebody else. But it's growth for the industry. And for me, that's what's important. Growth in the industry. You know what? I think that's what's lacking so much in our music industry. Order. No, no, no. no. Selfishness. That too. There's lack of order, uh, selfishness and lack of seriousness. And I noticed this with, not that I'm looking down upon our local artists or anything, but I noticed this with Assam for the Great episode. What we had to go through to put that episode up. <laughs> we had calls from as far as, well, through other people, through agency in Zambia, but we had to get, you know, permission from America to wow. post a photo of Sampa on our page. And we had to send them all the photos we had. Plus the caption, what are you going to post? And they'll say, no, this won't work because her face looks funny. Yeah, they wow. refused the first photo we sent. They did? That. Yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> yeah. We sent them a photo saying, we're going to post this to say Sampa the Great is coming on That's It podcast next week. Yeah. We sent the photo to the agent here in Zambia who sent it to the agent in America, I think, and even Australia. They mm-hmm. both responded saying the same thing. Uh, photo not good, change it. We had to send another one with a caption. Yeah. Change a word or something. When they approve, uh-huh. then we post. Yeah. But even in the interview, you can get a sense of how there's so much order in the music industry out there. So I get what of you're course, talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Order is there what is. actually... Makes you the kind of money that you made from the song Amarula, you know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. And um, the reason I say it's selfishness is because we aren't really happy when we see another person thriving. And that's oh, where yeah. the problem is. You get it. A, crap a lot of we'll yeah, a lot of a lot of Zambian artists show fake love. Unfortunately. Like who? <laughs> <laughs> um, I might not be the right person to start talking about names, but the truth is we have so many talented people in this country. A lot of them given an opportunity to be on the same platform as either Burner Boy or WizKid. I can guarantee you our local artists would thrive and shine in a similar manner. However, mm. we have a problem in this country. Number one, you don't want to pay your artists a certain amount of money. Listen, if Diamond is going to charge me 50,000 US dollars for a feature. Yeah. How much money are you paying me for a local gig, right? Mm-hmm. So let's 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 say. Did he give charge you take. that much? Uh, that was like what four years ago? He charged me twenty five. And then two years 000. ago, you were on the same record label. So don't, <laughs> don't the dynamics of the future voilà. change? You know what I mean? And of course, they changed. Yeah. Um. Um. What was I about to say? Uh, before I lose my train of thought. Um. Yeah. What was I saying? Oh yeah, you you have artists that are making roughly say. Just as an example, from 5,000 to maximum, maybe 20,000 kwacha per gig, right? Mm-hmm. And someone is charging you 50,000 US dollars for a feature. How long is it going to take you to, to save up yeah. that 50,000 US dollars? Or and if you spend that, it, how much time are you going to have to man, re- recover? It is so difficult for Zambian artists to thrive and shine in the world. Not because we don't have the talent. We yeah. have the talent. The talent is there. 100%. Right now, if you had 100,000 US dollars and you tapped into somebody's craft and you give them enough resources to market themselves shoot a great music video you will tell me you come and you tell me mm. however we have people who believe hmm, you give a zambian mu- uh, musician money I don't know, they'll drink it or they'll become selfish they'll become big-headed blah blah blah, blah. and those are the negative sentiments that are there across the board yeah and that's why we are not seeing certain artists flourish and thrive and then they are the very same artists who might know somebody Look, I've met people who might not really have the talent, but they know people who are pretty well, you know, backstabbed. Mm. But they will not introduce you to that person because if it's not them, it shouldn't be anybody else, unfortunately. And then your most recent project is entitled Journey to the East. Yeah. I need to ask this, bro. Like, do you feel more love from East Africa than here? 
to a few more love from East Africa. Mm. What do you Because you're, you're doing more work there. Like 80% of your album features East African artists. What do you think? <laughs> I want to hear it from the horse's mouth, though. No, I just want to know from you. I really feel like you're getting more love and respect from East Africa. Of course and I am. And more money. Of course I am. Um, Journey to the East was just the first in a series of albums that we want to put out. So we're doing Journey to the East, doing Journey to the West, Journey to the South, and Journey to the North. Mm, so okay. we started with Journey to the East because of just how the reception has been in East Africa. Yeah. So you kind of like start with a region that you pretty much already have a huge fan base. Not to say that yeah. in these other regions we don't have you know, a great following, but I feel like East Africa is so close to me. Yeah. Majority of my artist friends are from East Africa. Mm. So it's a little easier for me to engage and relate with them, put them on a project and that sort of thing. We started working on a Journey to the West album, and I will tell you, it's been slower than You're gonna the Journey to the East. No, no man, in the West, West as in Africa. All right. Yeah. So Journey not to the far East. West. No, 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 not yet, man. That's, a... That's gonna be Journey to the Far West. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know how they say, <clears throat> no one is ever. Say again. The prophet's never accepted his own land. Yeah. No one is ever a prophet in their own land. Yeah. Yeah. True. But yeah. But how did you penetrate the East African market? Though? Maybe let's start from there. Or well, let's. You know, take a few steps back. You just had to say penetrate. It started... <laughs> You're sodomizing the man's statement. <laughs> How did you penetrate the East African market? Man, stop sodomizing things. <laughs> did you use a lube? Did you oh, just go in MG. dry? How did you penetrate oh, that man. market? Um, yeah. I, I feel like it started really slow. Yeah. Um, there was a song I did with Alan Tonics called Swag Meter. Mm. And that was like my entry into Uganda. Initially, so Swag Meter was a big song in Uganda, parts of Rwanda as well, um, Burundi in that region. So that was like the entry point. Then I started having all these features with artists from from um, from Uganda and Rwanda because of our frequent frequent visits there. There's a guy called DJ Pius from Rwanda that we worked closely with. Yeah. So that was like our push. So if they're not on my song, um, on their song, but the biggest breakthrough, hundred percent without a shadow of a doubt, was Amarula. Not to say that there weren't other songs before that. Yeah. Good Woman did exceptionally well because of Big Brother. Mm. Yeah. So Good Woman was the other song that really had like huge following um, and mad love because of it played quite a lot on Big Brother. So um, when Amarula came out, at least people were able to identify and say, oh, it's this guy. Oh, that's, that's the guy. Oh, that's the guy that did that song. You know what I mean? So it, it kind of just accelerated things and yeah. Push that that direction. In, in, I, I like how when I'm in Tanzania, like we we'll go clubbing sometimes across the border, and you hear a two two artists that are really penetrating East Africa. Sorry to use that word again, Elson. Okay. You guess you're excited. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You sure? Okay. Mm-hmm. Two artists yeah. that are consistently on playlists in Tanzania: Roberto and J Rocks. Mm-hmm. And I would call J Rocks, and I would even apologize to him sometimes at midnight and say, "Dude, do you know how big your music is here?" And he wouldn't believe me. This was like two, three years ago. Yeah. He wouldn't believe me. And I'll tell him places as far as Kilimanjaro City, near the uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. I'll get reports of how when a J Rock song plays, people rush to the dance floor, yeah. and he would never believe me. Distance. I just didn't have your number then, but I think I would have been calling at midnight as well <laughs> to tell you how much of a banger your music. That's true. Yeah. Um, I think J Rocks has done exceptionally well. Um, but may I remind you that um, I think before myself or J-Rox actually had this amount of airplay yeah. in those countries that people like Mumpy who enjoyed excessive like airplay. Especially Mauritius Mumpy though. She was there a couple of times, yeah. Have you seen Mumpy's performances in Mauritius? Packed. Wow. Dude, Man, it's she... almost like she's a local or this is like yeah. Rihanna who's come through. Yeah. Mumpy is big. No, is from you, she used to live there the t- yeah. for years. So she'd always say like Mumpy is Mumpy is big. Should be a headline act in Of Mauritius. course. Mm. Yeah. Same as K Figo, by the way. Yeah. Do you know that? No. K Figo. Yeah, man. Mauritius, K Figo. Serious. Yeah, you, you can't play. We're sleeping on these people, eh? Zam- <laughs> Hence I'm saying yeah. we, we show each other a lot of fake love. You know what I mean? And it's so unfortunate. It's something that really hurts me because if only we knew the power of unity, we would not even be doing some of these things to each other. Mm. We have a lot of camps among us ourselves. And then when we meet, it's almost like, yeah, how are you? But we don't even, people like to attack me. Oh, no, Roberto's like, dude, when was the last time you ever even came to me and said, bro, can you assist me with this? 
people are so quick to kind of like just label me as this selfish person, this self-centered person. Yeah. But question is, and I always ask these pe- people the same question. The person who was telling you that, when was the last time they ever called me? Or when was the last time they ever even came to hang out with me and seek information? So we, we, we really have like a lot of work to do, but it has to start with ourselves because we have the talent, we have the gift, and we have the potential to actually do amazing things out there. Robert is your real name, right? No. What is? Robert. Oh, right. Yeah. He, Just, he, he turned it into a Spanish name. Yeah. I actually didn't even, like, I had these friends of mine, um, so they called me Robertos, because they're from Angola. And oh, Portuguese. Andy. Yes. So they used to say, Robertos, Robertos. So there's a song we recorded, and then they were basically mocking me. And in the song, they kept saying, hey, I was, I was on the hook. And yeah. before his verse ends, he's like, and I pass it over to my guy, Robertos. So it was basically just like, tease me. And yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Then, then one guy just said, why don't you just call yourself Roberto? And that's how the name started. Nobody ever calls you Bob? Uh, a couple of people. Okay. Those, that, call- those that feel like they're really close to me. Yeah. <laughs> they feel like they're entitled to Can I call you Bob? For what? I don't know. And For the purpose of this interview. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that look, I don't trust. <laughs> Why? Man. Sounds like it's going somewhere. <laughs> the period, the period we are actually experiencing right now in the country is yeah. quite worrisome. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. You know, f- funny. Um, I was watching. I can't remember the title of that documentary. I don't know if you've seen it. The Origins of Afrobeat or something on mm-hmm. Netflix. Have you seen that? They were talking I about. I haven't watched it yet. I saw it was recommended to me, but I haven't seen it. I've I've watched, I think, like the first five or so episodes. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about uh, Nigerian music and how they started growing it. Dude, the unity in that country when it comes to music. Oh, it's crazy. And then... If only we could tap into like 10% of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then 10 years ago, they just decided we need to penetrate the American market. Dude, it's like they all just sat down and said... Sorry? Is is there something on your mind? No, I'm, I'm worried about him. Well, clearly... I am worried about him. Now you'll be but home why soon. would you be worried about him? Because his words excite him. Right. Yeah. Well, now, now, and then, and then see, so how listen, is it, listen, how, how, hold up. No. So how is it benefiting him by you repeating that same word? It gets him excited, don't worry. So so why do you want to get me excited? Can I just is his question. No, but now now now, now we are worried. The word keeps coming because it's appropriate. See, now we are worried. The word is appropriate for him trying to describe. So if if, if, you're if gonna, it's true that it excites me, why if do you're you want to get into a market? Me? What's the word you're gonna use? Okay, maybe let's the market. Okay, okay, hold on. Maybe maybe let's get this out of the way. Are you excited? No. Okay, thank you. You're really good at hiding this also. But anyway. Hiding what? Your excitement. <laughs> your excitement. Bam. Your excitement. In MC Hammer pants, I couldn't. Well, he's basically trying to say you're excited about penetration. Exactly. So when, in the documentary, they start, they start talking about uh, about 10 years ago, mm-hmm. when they decided that as Nigerians, they're going to get into the American market. Yeah. They look at who's sort of making it right now that we can push. And they decided WizKid was that man. Dude, the amount of work they put in to make sure Whiskey is heard in America was just... Who's they? Like the, the, uh, Nigerian. the Nigerian music industry. Hmm. When they just sat on the like we're going to have unit, Nigerian yeah. music heard in America. It's no accident that they're that big in America right now. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Like Burner Boy is getting Grammys. Whiskey getting Nigerians, Grammys. Yeah. Nigerians have positioned themselves so well. Go to any institution, you will find a Nigerian there. True. Yeah. BET, there's a Nigerian there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they Three own or four. It. Is it MNET MTV, yeah. they're there. And I feel like they're not there by chance. They're there on merit because mm-hmm. they have decided, guys, for us to grow as an industry and as a country and a culture, Dominate. we need to be educated. People are just not going to employ you just because you're Nigerian. You need to know your work. You need to know your craft. So all these people that have been employed, these are people who know their work. Mm-hmm. They will always look out for their own people. And man, if you see CNN, you find an article written about Burner Boys written by a Nigerian. Or someone yeah. from Ghana. You get it? That's so I, I heard of a story. I don't know if this is true or not because I haven't had time to fact check this. About three to four weeks ago, uh-huh. uh, Young Money had a reunion in Canada. Young Money? Yeah. Okay. So Sorry, it was... Just put this it, for a bit. No, that's fine. It was Drake, Lil Wayne, and Nicki Minaj. Uh, and on the same Saturday that they had this concert... Yeah. Burner Boy had a concert in Canada too. More people showed up to the Burner Boy concert than the Young Money concert. Yeah. Wow. Okay. But it says a lot about So, so in my mind, yeah. I, I thought either this guy is extremely good or 
Canada has got more Nigerians than Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> One of them, which, which but, we highly doubt, probably. Yeah. But I feel maybe it's 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 the trend. You need to look at the trend. What's, exactly. what's, Afrobeast what's trending, is what's trending right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, it is. Because even Fiskani, uh, I don't know if you watched our Fiskani episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, lady in America doing it. She's from... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember well, that, lives yeah. in Atlanta. Uh-huh. She lives in Atlanta. Yeah. So we've been, you know, talking quite a bit of late. And she was like, you guys, we're going to make this podcast happen in America as well. I think, is she the lady that was with... Is it Kid Sweat? Kid Sweat? Yes, yes, I was about to show you that. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I saw that, I saw that. And so, plugged oh, us to Kid Sweat. Damn, yeah. that's huge. Uh, Ramik, you should just do a clip. Now that you mentioned that, for those who didn't see it, just add a clip. To yeah, this. man, it's important. People so need to know. what she said is, she's already making a few connections for us, and American artists are actually excited to come onto this podcast because yeah. Africa is the future. True. She says Afrobeats have, you know, has no yeah. Afrobeats has. Yeah, it's not plural. It's just one thing, right? Has okay. So Afrobeats. It's getting so big in America that American artists now want to collaborate more with, with, Africans. Ha- with Africans. You know what I mean? So she said, look, this is going to happen. And we're just riding the wave. Exactly. All right. You know how they say a rising tide? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And finish. I feel like, I feel like I can't this is the end of that phrase. He's laughing at Raises all boats. I feel like now is the time to yeah. take advantage and <laughs> be a part and parcel of, you know, the growth of Afrobeat. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're good. Yeah. We, we, have to, we, we have to take advantage of the wave. Trust me. Like, it, it's, it's a must. If we miss this opportunity, I do not know when next Africa will have another opportunity like True. this one. Yeah. And I'll remind you. Remember there was a time when EDM was the thing that mm. even the rappers were jumping on EDM. David Guetta and yeah. the rest of them. Nicki Minaj had an EDM album. Chris Brown had an EDM album. Drake has now got a house album. Exactly. <laughs> He's going the other so, way. So, you know, some of these things, there's, music is seasonal. That's why you have artists that will show up three, four years down the line, gone. Same as a sound, certain genre. Do you think I'm a piano will last, though? Because I'm already, fed, I'm already, I, I'm already I, tired I, of I'm a piano, eh? I'm giving it another year. I'm already tired of I'm a piano. I'm giving it piano. another year. But looking at South Africa, those guys, they always come up with something else, man. Because yeah. just not too long ago, we had Kom. Yeah. You know, like the sound that uh, Shoma Josie had. Now it's slowed down. It's Man, more. Cena. Na, yeah. na, 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 na. South Africa always has a way of reinventing sound and music and just taking things. To you said level. Drake went the other way when, we, when, when he was speaking about EDM and whatnot. Yeah. Um, you. That's your home? The Kazadi. He hardly calls yeah, we'll, me. Yeah, we'll call it back. Um. Oh, you said, know, you yeah. know that the person that executive produced Drake's album, Black Coffee, Black is Coffee. Black Coffee. Yeah. yeah, African. Yeah, okay, it's coming to Africa. Man. It is coming, it's to, coming to Africa. Africa. That's the point. No, no, no by the other way, I meant like uh, he said, Afrobeats is sort of like a new sound now, and I said, yeah, Drake has sort of tapped into that, but it's gone the other way, mm-hmm. like House. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Here, House is like old. Yeah, old yeah, news, yeah. And Drake has now gone. Mm-hmm. That direction, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even Beyonce too. Oh yeah, on the on the new yeah. One. There's ru- there's rumors that Beyonce is working with what's what's the happening kid in Nama Piano? Cubs at the small, Cubs at the small. Is it? Or DJ Maporisa? Because yeah. who's the one working under Maporisa? It's Cubs, right? Cubs are the small. Yeah, there's rumors of Beyonce doing a song with Cubs. It's possible. Yeah, because and I heard like Maporisa paid like a like a shitload of money to buy Cubs out of his label. Did you hear about that? That makes sense because they're always together now with. This, yeah, uh, he bought him out. Second, Scorpion Kings. He was a Scorpion Kings. Wait, you guys. Okay, unless if, unless if I'm not so, but isn't uh, isn't it that DJ Maparisa is pretty much like the person that brought out Cubs of the Small? Yeah, but then he's, where he's he found like him? Level? Second. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, he, he took him from him. another label, so he had to buy him out okay, okay. Now, of his contract okay. Okay. Now to get him onto his onto his label. Onto his label. Okay. Yeah, which is called Black Something Something or something like that. I think Angus. Okay. I don't know. I don't Any, know. Anything like that. But yeah, I, something I like know. that. Where in SA were you? I was in Joburg. Which part? Hillbrook. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> when I first got <laughs> I to know, when I first got to Johannesburg, I was staying in Lindhurst. In what? Lindhurst. Lindhurst. Okay. Yeah, Lindhurst is uh, Balfour Park. So there's Hyde Park, Balfour mm-hmm, Park, mm-hmm. and Lindhurst. Well, that's yeah. a very fancy neighborhood, man. Yeah, it was. Then uh, moved to Kensington, and then later on we moved to uh, we moved to Hyde Park. From Hyde Park, we moved to North Riding. Look at you. Yeah. You're making quite a bit of money. How, how did you afford to live in all these places? 
Ah, it wasn't my money initially. <laughs> so my sister was there and then uh, my brother came through. Oh, so she's boxed up. <laughs> she's late now. So yeah, but she was working for a bank there. And then, uh, yeah, when I when I was done with my high school, I did my grade 12 there, mm. uh, college there. Mm. Um, then I started working. So when I started working, right. yeah, I kind of started making my own money and right. yeah, started paying my own rentals and the likes. Never got shot or stabbed? No. Uh, I was just in an encounter where there was a shooting in... Uh, the car that we were driving in was shot at. Shot at? Yeah. Or deliberately, or it was like a stray? Uh, no, 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 no. They were trying to... We're coming from Pretoria. So we're in... Um, what place is that? When you're coming from Pretoria, what? Centurion? What Midrand? Midrand. Yeah. Yeah, Midrand. So we're coming from uh, Pretoria. There was some event that was taking place, and we're heading back to Johannesburg. But we're using the N1, or we're using like inner routes? No, no, the N1. Uh-huh. So we're on the highway. Um, then one of the guys actually wanted to pass some water. To pee? Yeah. Take a piece? Yeah, so we just parked on the side of the, the highway, and that's when it happened. So, so they came and they parked next to you? Yeah. So just when we were like, you know, like, we noticed something was odd, and we're trying to get into the car then, yeah. What car did you guys have? We had a BMW. What type? It was the 3 Series. That was like Yeah, that car is hot. So, so yeah. they, trying to, they were trying to get the car, or what? what, what? Of course. I, I think so. What do you think? They were trying to sodomize you? No, 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 I'm trying to understand why they didn't get the car. <laughs> Why well, you, you thought they saw the guy with the decal and they're like, okay, oh cool, now God. we are going to stop. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, I'm trying to understand why it they didn't get the car. Clearly, it was the car because those are those. Like, why shoot the car that you're trying to then just leave period. it? There was a period that to strip it. BMWs were just like hot cake. Yeah. And like right now, I think for the past five years, ah, we digress. You're so not much. getting me. Yeah. Why didn't they get the car? That's no, out, out. We sped off. Because they, 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 they drove no, off. Like in my saw. imagination, they're still peeing when the bullets are flying. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, they wouldn't shoot at the car if they can just stop and get into the car. Kalenga. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was saying, you know, so I think for the past question. five years, you know, like the most hijacked vehicle is the VW Polo? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was. Now, SA is, I don't, I don't know, man. Is That's a big part of why I left that country. The economy is good, but the crime is just... Crime rate is just insane. Now there's xenophobia. So, yeah, and there's xenophobia. I don't think, okay, in certain I don't think, areas. Anyway. I don't think... In the poor areas. For me, that was the only incident I ever, like... You know, that was like... But because post-call. you lived in the fancy places, Roberto. Not really. Like, listen, I was schooling there, and I had friends that used to stay in different neighborhoods. I had friends that were coming from... Deep Kloof, I had friends that were coming from... Tell me know? a friend that you had who lived in the roughest neighborhood that you know. In, in Alex? I used to go to Alex. In, but that's next to Soweto. Oh, sorry, to... to no, no, not Joburg. No. To um, Senton. It is, but like, what's, what's, what's the word around Alex? Ah, it's Anybody who stays in Johannesburg or who stayed in Johannesburg, there are two places that you definitely be told to be very careful. Hillbro? Of course. Okay, let's make it three. Hillbro, <laughs> <laughs> Alexandra, and Soweto. But the truth is... Yeovil too. Well, Hebrew and Yeovil are pretty much the same thing. Because if you're coming from town, there's what? There's Berea, there's Hebrew, there's Yeovil, and then there's what? Uh, Highlands K- area. K plus left the chat. <laughs> <that> sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, and all of them are within the same road, which is... What, uh, what road is that again? Um, uh, what is That's that? That's not small. No, no, no. no, no Young no, Smarts? No no no. no, 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 no. I've been to the airport and signed it. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Watch a good morning, Zambia. My name is Chanda. Nominate me for best voiceover artist at the Zikomo Awards. From Zambia to Africa to the world, we're going somewhere in Cameroon, somewhere in Ethiopia, somewhere in Kenya, somewhere in Uganda, somewhere in Rwanda, somewhere in South Africa. Help me to tell our story. Click on the link in the bio. Scroll down and click on Best Voice Over Artist of the Year. Enter your name and your email. Now enter my name, Chanda Mianda. Enter my country, Zambia. Click on Submit. Come on now. We're going somewhere at the Zikomo Awards. No, there's, 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 I know the airport and Santin. Jan Smarts yeah. goes through Rosebank, I think, right? Jan Smarts. Man, uh, where, how long ago were you in Joburg? Why? What, Jan Smarts is no longer Jan Smarts? <laughs> there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of roads have been changed. The name of the roads have been changed. Like, but, for example... But, but here's the thing, though. Just like Jans- Pretoria is no longer Pretoria. It's Swane. C- c- dude, can you, do you mind? <laughs> Just like um, so, so Pretoria now is now Tswane, but people still call it Pretoria, you know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So though Jan Smarts might have changed... Uh-huh. 
some people still call it young smarts. I don't yeah. know if people actually really adapt to call it whatever it's being called now. A lot of a lot of um, road road names have been changed. So yeah, okay. I'm asking like when was the last time? Because a lot of roads have been changed. K plus okay. was added to the group. Yeah. Roberto. Yes, sir. Just one more question about your music before we uh, move on. Change topic. Okay. Your music videos, man. Do, do you make money back from them? You spend so much. Like if we can tell from the quality and stuff, and you travel for most of your music videos. Yeah. And there are a lot of beautiful women in your music videos. Mm-hmm. How do you manage to keep it professional? Before we talk about the money. When you say, how do I keep it professional? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, there are a lot of beautiful women in your videos. How do you you manage to keep it professional? Well, every music video needs to have, like, it needs to have somebody that's attractive. People attracted to... You're a way better man than Elson. What do you mean? I don't make music videos. I make other kind of videos. If you did, though. That's all I'm saying. With East African women, if you did, this guy wouldn't come back. I don't know. Well, the thing is, um, the history of music videos will always border border down to just how eye-catching... The content mm. in the music video. Yeah. And so if you look at hip hop videos, it's two things. Number one, beautiful women. Money. Two, not really. Booty, 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 booty. Hip hop is in line with <coughs> that. R and B is beautiful women, nicely dressed and very sentimental moments and that sort of thing. So depending on the artist who's shooting that particular music video, one of these two things will definitely find. If it's rappers, they want to have chicks in bum shorts and underwear, mm. you know, G-street twerking. Thongs. Exactly. Yeah. Like you mentioned money. That's, that's just like the, the identity of hip hop culture, yeah. right? With R&B, it's, it's somewhat a little different. You could have somebody in some lingerie and they're just coming onto you at a, on a bed. There isn't twerking as per se. You won't have like 90 girls twerking for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's so different. So, it's almost like you you are going through this whole process of understanding music videos and how they are. But of course, every beautiful woman that's in a music video, someone will always say, oh, okay, so <laughs> did it end at the music video? And I've had questions like that before, yeah, like a thousand that's times. That's why I had to ask as well. Yeah, especially, uh, I think the video that brought about a lot of question for me was for the song Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I don't I think a lot of people are just attracted to that girl and they're like, so... When you guys finish shooting this video, what happened? <laughs> uh, I went home. That's what happened. We shot it in Siavonga, so they were like, so did she sleep alone? <laughs> did she have her own room? Um, are you guys friends? I, have, I, haven't, I haven't seen that video. You haven't seen it? Uh, no, you should check it out. She pretty? Well, she is. For her to be my music video, she was. Yeah. Not she was, she is. She I wonder how, with everything that you've just described, concerning a typical successful hip hop music video Mm -hmm. with all the attributes and the traits of it. Mm -hmm. How did Lil Nas X (laughs) become so popular? I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) Because he did the opposite of exactly what you have just described. Well, you need to look at the, the the countries that like I'm here in Zambia. Yeah. Um, when, when you speak of gay rights, that's a whole different topic and story altogether a lot of people find it sensitive when you talk about it a certain type of way when you speak down on people that are practicing that depending on the countries that you're in it's different if you go to south africa for example you find people who are on tv and freely openly do whatever it is that they want to do here it's different so you cannot have a music video for example i can't have a music video and have two men kissing and expect it to fly just like that it's going to bring about a lot of controversy and that sort of thing because of the cultures but in the usa it's easy for an artist to do that because of just it's how acceptable they, exactly so it would be unfair to kind of like just compare the the two countries and the two cultures and the industries we are of course all making music you know and trying to make money off it but yeah. different uh, there are a lot of uh, different aspects that come into play but don't you think that the talent and how good the music is supersedes the person's sexual orientation because you'd, you'd even hear kids. Have you got kids? Um, let me not mention that yet, but yeah. You'd even hear kids singing off, uh, what was the Old Town Road? You, you'd hear them yes, sing yes, off of that. Course, yeah, yeah. How was a hit at kids' parties? At yeah, course, they, don't, the, they don't care this guy's gay. If, if, if anything, and the fact that it's... it's but wait, hold on. Okay, sure, I, I need to correct you. Yeah. Isn't it he, he uh, openly said he was gay way after that song came no. out? Or it was before? Way before. Okay, I thought it was. That's actually the meaning of. If do you know the meaning behind the song? No, no, no. Yeah, just run your googles. Okay. Yeah. I'll check it out definitely. I have. I have no idea. No I mean, idea. Speak, speaking of your music, you're not, you're not your maps, but people <laughs> refer to you as Mr. Romantic a lot. What is your maps, Mr. Romantic? Well, he's got a song entitled Mr. Romantic. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know that song, right? No. 
<laughs> wow. Does writing love songs just come easily for you? Because most of your songs, like 90% of your catalog is love songs. I would say yes. Yes. Um, it's only recently that I kind of like wanted to divert and talk about different issues. Like African Woman for me um, is something that I wanted to work on just to um, give women of different structure and figure and background something that they can really ride on, you know. Um, we all have different tastes mm. in, in, you know, our, in our spouses. And um, the... The, the sad part about it is that we always want to praise women that look a certain type of way and make them look like that is the best, mm. you know, um, for everybody. But you need to understand the people that either would like very petite, slender women, that those are like thick women, that those are like women that are thick boned. So it, yeah. it, it really just varies depending on who you are and what your preference is. But we should not make another woman feel like they are anything lower than the person that might look like the most beautiful woman in the room. So I wanted to create a song that would be relatable for to anybody, for anybody out there. You walk into a room, you hear that song, you should be like, that's my song. That's you, what's regardless up. of how you look, shape, color, size. You are all queens. Exactly. Speaking even, of queens. Even the fat wife's name is Queen. Yes, she is. Yeah. Um, are, are you like, aside from, away from music videos, are you mm-hmm. that romantic in real life as well? I am. She's actually outside waiting for me. Then she's the romantic one. I just no, asked no, no, you no. about a woman that was outside and you acted clueless. <laughs> no, no, not, that was not her. How do you know the woman that I was referring to? It can't be her. It's not possible. Oh, okay. It's not so possible. How, how did you meet? How did you propose? Well, there's a story. Did, that did you sing to her? Like, there's a story. Did that you sing away to her heart? He's what about I, to tell us. A story I'm, I'm finishing my question, dude. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> He's just about to tell us. Apologies. He's I'm telling mean, us. I mean, Jesus noise. Christ. What the hell kind of host are you? I, I ask Remember your question saying? in seconds and let him answer. God damn it. Can I answer now? Please. Oh. Please. <laughs> you have my permission now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a story, yeah. there's a story that I met my wife at a club and I'm like, wait, what? You're not like K plus. Who did? Uh, did you? Well, no yeah, disrespect to You met anybody. your wife at a club? Yeah. Well, listen, no disrespect to anybody who's ever met their partners at a club. Yeah. You get, I, I think I have met people who met in some of the most random places. Yeah. What's the difference with meeting somebody on the bus and meeting somebody at the club? Yeah. You get it. What matters is the type of friendship you guys build exactly. there onwards. It's Talk different about it. If, it's different if you are going to pick up uh, a prostitute from a club and then you... <laughs> fall then, in love with the prostitute. Yeah. That's, I, I think that's a different ballgame altogether. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to answer your question, yeah. how we met, we met via a friend um, and then... Um, we kind of just started talking. I'd met her once and we're just like communicating virtually. And then uh, there's a time when Radio and Weasel came to Zambia for my brother's launch. So oh, the potential came, remix. Yeah. Yeah. So that period, that's when, that was the first time, the day that those guys actually arrived, or if not the second day, the next day actually, um, that's when I invited because we had like a little uh, get together, invited a few artists to come through and just meet Radio and Weasel. So I invited her, like, yo, would you like to be my date um, at this party? And she's like, yeah, cool, 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 cool. And she did the one thing that most women do. Mm. I asked her out and she came with three of her friends. Oh my <laughs> so <laughs> that'll be the last time you see me. <laughs> she came with three of her friends. I'm like, okay, what uh, well, what's going on? So now imagine we are packed by Nipa Bama campus. Um, and then, boom, she comes out first alone. So, hi, hi, hi. so are you ready? She's like, yeah. And then she's like, um... I'm with my friends. I'm like, okay, uh, sure. I'm like thinking it's one. one, two, max. And I'm like, boom, okay, boom, okay, boom. Like, <laughs> do we have enough space? And with every boom, the budget is growing. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm like thinking, okay, do we even have enough space <laughs> Wait, to what, accommodate was this dinner? Sorry? Was this the dinner that you, that you were going to? Yeah, like in the evening. So, um, yeah, so I was like, okay, <sighs> damn, all right, cool. No, but it wasn't like a dinner day like this. It was like a, a like chill. A, a chill. So, it's, were you food in the bill? Yes. Roberto. <laughs> Hold on. I need to take a drink. Yes? Please go ahead. Number one, you are a better man than I am. Else would have gone home. Clearly. The second. More Number than one two, friend showed up. I, I, I wouldn't have gone home. We would have gone to where we are going to go. <laughs> but However, not with friends. Yeah. You have essentially 
what three other people who are going to help clean the dishes oh, when the bill MG. comes? <laughs> I am paying for shit. I think it's gonna have <laughs> two receipts. Oh, guys, uh, for, your, for the three of you, and then this uh, is that's for your me bill. And, uh, yeah. this is for me. And but uh, why do women do? Why do women do this? I don't know. If, if yeah, your wife her. was here, I would have wanted to ask her that. She's outside. <laughs> Can we ask her? No, no, no. Wait, no, at no, what no. stage was a relationship? Like, didn't she have confidence around you for her to bring friends? No, no, no. Um, yeah. This was like the second time we were meeting. Okay, well. Yeah. No, no. Don't defend that bullshit. Because what, <laughs> listen. No, come on. No, because, <laughs> no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Crazy if you, if you don't place. trust the person. Yeah. It's not like she didn't trust me. I think because I, I kind of like detailed where we were going and that sort of thing. And because she was staying, she was staying at campus. So, I want to like I want to clearly and vividly remember what she told me. Like this, they they were bored and they kind of like asked. They were so, what? bored, <laughs> bored. They were bored. Or bored. Yes, they were right. bored. So if anything, that's the reason why. Like when she came, she asked like, "Are you okay with me coming with?" So she asked you before she brought her friends. Yes, she did. And you said yes. I said it's okay. But you expected I just like two friends. Know, I did not know there would be a particular number. So she asked me. Right. Saying, well, at least she had the courtesy to ask. No, she did. She oh, did okay. You, you, right, did, cool. That's you did acceptable not, then. Yeah. yeah you, you, you left that part out. Bro. No, no, no. I did mention it. Did you? Yeah, I said. I said. I also said, missed she that. Said, uh, no, oh, no you, I said it. You did? Yeah, I did. We need to rewind the tape. <laughs> Can you guys rewind? Did he say that she asked to bring her friends? <laughs> rewind, rewind, and then rewind come the tape. Yeah, no, but I did mention. Anyway, it. Okay. okay, cool. Yeah, so, well, so she then if she asked, then that's that's a whole different ball game. She asked. She asked. Because I I honestly think, if you do not trust, so not referring to your scenario but in general mm -hmm. women that bring friends on dates a lot of the a lot of the time their reason is no i don't know you i don't trust you and so i brought my oh, friends okay. and number one if you're gonna bring a friend and if my intention was to do harm to you mm -hmm. is your friend really gonna stop me that's number one number two <laughs> is if you don't trust that person mm -hmm. you don't have any business going out on a date with them nurture that relationship over the phone up until you get to a point where you trust them. Yeah, where well, you're comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but she did ask me. All right, cool. Yeah, she did. So, so I was okay with it. I just did not know the number. But yeah, but it turned out to be a really cool night. And you know what would have been fucked up though? What? Is if you liked one of her friends. Or if one of her friends like looked harder than you were. Because <laughs> 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 it's very be, risky bringing friends to be, these days. To be honest, to be honest, um, she came and... She chose her other friends, didn't she? No, 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 no. no. Um, I think I wasn't paying much attention to her. And then a friend of mine said, dude, why are you not paying attention to the cute one? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, dude, haven't you noticed she keeps looking at you? And because I was Who was so, the cute one? My wife. Okay. Yeah. So, because I, I was so caught she up shot. in stuff and that sort of thing that I did not notice she kept looking at me and looking at me. And so one of my friends like, dude, do you know this woman keeps looking at you? Right. And that, that was the moment for me. I was just like, oh, snap. You know what? I think I've been way too occupied trying to talk to his She doesn't have to be on camera. She can sit there. I want to ask her a couple of questions. No, 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 no. My wife doesn't do She's interviews. She's a very private woman, yeah. Very, very. Okay. She doesn't like interviews. But you, you sound like a, like a very lucky dude, though. I'm not really lucky. I think I'm extremely blessed. Right. Yeah. Your wife is so private that every time I've met her at the mall, she's mm. already in the car. And <laughs> <laughs> We've had crazy encounters. My wife and Serious, I, eh? yeah, my wife and I have had crazy encounters. What kind of encounters? We're walking hand in hand, mm. and this woman just comes in between and just pushes her aside. No, wow, Roberto, wow, I'm so happy to wow. see you. And they don't say, "I'm your number one fan." They say, "You are my number one fan." <laughs> English. <laughs> and then know, right? there are these photos taking place, of which. Like when somebody says that, I understand what they're trying to say. Yeah. So you don't ridicule them. You don't yeah. make them feel any bad or anything like that. But for me, one of the things that I feel is offensive is you disrespecting my wife uh, when she's in my presence. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in most cases, when someone say, like, tries to act up like that, I always say, ask her first. Because you cannot disrespect my wife and expect me to respect you. Mm -hmm. Talk mm -hmm. about it. it. It just can't work. Mm -hmm. You disrespect my wife, you're disrespecting me, period. And so whether you're going to say I've got an attitude, let it be then. But if you want to show respect to me, you need to respect he my chill. wife. And that's just the way it is. So, <laughs> so, so what she, 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 like you say, what she rushes to the car because she doesn't want encounters like that anymore? I feel she, she's reached a point where she understands uh, the excitement that is there. And, and at times she's the one that actually says, say not. if it were me and I'm seeing you for the first time, yeah. I'll be I'll that excited. The same way. You get it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's more of let me give them the space because sometimes people feel a bit there are others that feel a bit like tense like 
uh, am I allowed to just take a picture with him? So she doesn't want to create that uh, scenario where one feels, oh, you know, she's rigid and that sort of thing. So you find sometimes she would walk and just stand somewhere far and just be watching from a distance and that, that sort of thing. So, that yeah. happened to me last week in Kitwe. Yeah. At the table with my wife and in-laws and this, these girls just come straight to oh. talk to me and ask for photos. And yeah. There's someone that actually one time just came from nowhere and tried to kiss me. I'm like, yo, wait. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? Nah. You, you've had it bad then. <laughs> no, it's been, it's been crazy. Like, they are all kinds of yeah. crazy encounters that pop up. It was a girl, I hope. <laughs> You just you said someone. Someone. Man, just can you want... please give him your purse? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of meeting at the mall, clearly Roberto, he needs it. <laughs> this is the most dressed down I've ever seen you. I just put, put my phone in silent. Thank you. This is the most dressed down I've ever seen you. You're always camera ready, if I may. Wow. Yeah. Always uh, very stylish. Damn. Always like in a music video. I was hoping that was a compliment, but. Dress, damn it! No, today I dressed down. Of course, yeah. yeah T-shirt, yeah. jeans. Yeah. This is the least dressed I've ever seen Roberto ever. Yeah, least no, dressed. Yeah, no. But well, he's not naked, but like he's always. <laughs> no, I'm trying to get at this guy. You think? You, <laughs> hey, 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 hey! You, I'm just saying what he said. Which is why I started think, with the phrase you "dress think down." You think he's seen lesser than this? I have no idea. <laughs> damn it, man! Do, do you do you want to tell us? Do you want to tell us? Are you are you sure about this right now? I know, right? <laughs> hey, I'm repeating what he said. I, I I'm, right? I'm repeating what he said. But no, it, <sighs> dressed down, but the the bling is always there, like yeah, rings yeah, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Who, who's your stylist? Are those emeralds? Sorry. Those oh, this is uh, Tomalin. So, um, okay, let me just tell you a quick story. So yeah. we got our rings from Joe of Africa. The time we were getting married. That's why I asked. Rush me, Sharma. Yeah, rush oh, me. That's my person. Yeah. So yeah, so we had an agreement, and she was like, "Listen, when you guys clock five years, uh, you're gonna come back, and we're gonna work." On- rush me. I've done six years. Damn. You're not right, as big as listen. he is. I wasn't. I wasn't gonna miss. You are not as big as he is. Oh snap. <laughs> But yeah, so I'll she was like, we're going to do an upgrade luck. and uh, blah, 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 blah. So she was like, ask me, okay, so what figures are coming in your head? I'm like, 200,000, blah, 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 blah. So yeah. So this is pure tourmaline and the three diamonds this side and three diamonds this side. And this is gold. And my wife has got a pure diamond. Wow. Yeah. Niggas, it doesn't mean that because it's given us figures, what stone it is, what, you know, you need mineral, to rush this man. You need to chop his hand off. No, please. No. But yeah, we've got them courtesy of... Um, Rush me, yeah, in Joe Africa. Africa. Yeah. yeah, so everything is pure stone. I, I, I said a story of how she wanted to give me what emeralds for the emeralds. Lusaka July. Yeah, yeah. Lusaka actually, July. we were supposed to do the same. Um, I think there was a Lusaka July that my wife was supposed to put on um this necklace, and she was like, "But we need two security personnel to be present." I'm like, "Yeah, cool, no problem." So yeah, but like Joe of Africa was she was, she like, was she's amazing. She was ready to give me a brooch and cufflinks and with how much again? Half a million? Um, 400 and something thousand? Wow. No, but with, I, I would have but been walking on nervously definitely. the whole day. I, I, that's yeah. what, that's Any a, black person comes towards me. That's exactly <laughs> why I said no. You are not getting... You see how close you are to me? That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's, that's the close one. I'm like, yeah, coming. nigga, stop right there. Wow. I don't know you like that. If, if, any, if nigga, anything, don't initially, to money. Uh, initially my wife had an issue with me going to perform with this ring because of... Like, value, yeah, because of the value. So, um, not just the off? cash value, the sentimental value attached to The sentimental to well. value, the cash value. So, this ring is actually registered. If you go to Joe of Africa, um, if, if you actually zoom in, you actually check this like a code because of the diamonds. There's a what? Uh, oh, she mentioned that she yeah. putting like right. a signature yes. inside. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so anywhere we go in the world, whatever it is, even if you try, even if you store this ring and you try to sell it, whoever it is that will try and buy it, they will find that it is registered in my name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like 100%. Pure real deal. No, well, unless you deal. unless you sell it in the DRC, they don't give a shit who is registered. <laughs> no, 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 no. Someone will still want to find. I've seen Land there. Cruisers with the Zesco logo <laughs> on the door. Wow. <laughs> did you did you see? Speaking of, did you see those trucks? In Congo. Did you yeah. see those trucks that were sold to ISIS and they still had the logo of a company? <laughs> on? What? Yes. ISIS could drive yeah. UN vans, man. <laughs> no, like we don't give a shit, bro. <laughs> No, nah, but we that's why sometimes we move around with security and yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. So you don't sometimes wanna... we just leave them home, leave them somewhere under like yeah. In a safe. Yes. Because now the safe black place. people watching this know. Be um safe. though, but that's that's why most of the times I move around with the other one. Then we just leave it somewhere. Oh, you've got a cheaper one. <laughs> 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 so 
<laughs> no, the other one is white gold, so it's it, it looks it looks cheap. Who's your, so we feel we feel actually good that you you rocked that for. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for the trust, bro. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Let me just call my plug for. <laughs> <laughs> The porn dealer. You should see, <laughs> yeah, you were saying? You should see the weapon. Uh, who, you who's your style inspiration, man? Like I said, this is the most dressed down I've ever seen you. Like you're always top mm-hmm. notch. Um, I wouldn't say I have one person in particular, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm a social media freak. Yeah. So I like Social to, media what? Freak. freak. Okay. Yeah, I like to do a lot of research on what's trending, what's new and that sort of thing. So mm-hmm. pretty much just stay up to date. If you've noticed, I've got some grays on my beard. So, you know, there's new trends, that sort of thing. So yeah. you always want to just really just stay up to date. Um, time and time again, I have um, um, Yebo Designs that does my outfits, and uh, we've been with him for a while now. So most of my video shoots, um, he and the mom actually get to work on my uh, outfits or for my wife and that sort of thing. But of course, we do have um, Mediatrix Can as well. Just check out Roberto's Instagram. <laughs> There's Mediatrix as well that we started working with that is <coughs> also putting together some outfits for us. So yeah. Different people that time and time again we get to work with. Sometimes there are a few stylists that would say, listen, I made this and we thought you'd look good in it and that sort of thing. So I do appreciate a lot of people, of course, that come come, come on board and, you know, um, share their pieces of outfits and that sort of thing, which is a yeah. pretty cool thing, yeah. Interesting. Yep. Roberto, how many how many followers have you got on, uh, on IG? On Instagram? What is it? Is it 405,000? I don't know. Okay. Dude, I've got about... Wait, I, Roberto Zambia, right? Yes, sir. Dude, you need to you need to boost my followers, man. You've got about four hundred and five. There's no way you got like four hundred and five, and I've got like just four hundred five thousand. Yeah. yeah, bro. On Instagram. Yeah. Yes, damn. Don't you want to plug me? I need more followers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Uh, uh, and be specific. You, you one, want one, female one... followers? Is it male followers? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't. Can uh... you be specific for a change in your life? I, I know, right? <laughs> specific about what? The people that follow me? Yeah. No, the, the people that you want. To follow you, yeah. I, males or females? I don't give a good goddamn. No, 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 man. You need to be specific. Do about, you want female followers? You want male? Followers? I want female followers, of course. Okay, great. Well, so are you gonna do that? Okay. So first and foremost, let's do this for anyone that might be watching for the first time. Mm-hmm. What's your Insta handle? Changamire underscore one. Cha. Very confusing. Changamire. Changamire. Mm-hmm. Underscore. Underscore one. O N E. Oh, okay, cool. I've seen you. I found you. You got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. You follow me? 100%. So I'm going to screenshot Done. that. The Roberto just followed me. Followed you instantly. Hopefully you get to like 20,000 by tomorrow. I was Hopefully. once, um, um, I want, once attended this interview, the just early days, uh, 2015, somewhere there in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was this guy, his name was Eric Komondi. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I want to follow you on Instagram. And he's like, wait, you have this few followers. That's such a big artist. And he's like, he called a friend of his, his name is Sleepy David, and NBC. He's like, let's go. We're going to post this guy. We're going to post this guy. And I'll not lie to you. That day, I can, I think we had over 30,000, 40,000 people following me. In one day? In one day. Who's this guy? Give me his number. Eric Komondi. Yeah. Check him out on Instagram. Eric Komondi. Okay, I'll just say, Roberto said I should reach out. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Omondi. Eric Omondi. He's a comedian. Then went to Tanzania. There was this radio presenter who, at that time that I was... Sure, this guy's got 3.9 million. Yeah. Crap. Um, so she was like, um, I asked her, say, wow. if, can you follow me for a day? I'm challenging you on radio live right now. Can you follow me for a day? At least, because she was not following anybody. And she's like, okay, I'm going to follow you now. And just that one act on radio, because everybody that was going to her account finds that... She was only following one person. Who's a special guy? Wow. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and those are certain things, uh, certain <clears throat> techniques that I feel like we need to tap into sometimes when you go somewhere. Sometimes when you tell somebody, listen, my Instagram handle is, hey, man. people will be like, okay, listen. They look at you, but they might not follow you. But you always have to find something creative to draw people to, yeah. your, to yeah. your page and your account. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for me, I found it pretty easy to kind of like just tap into their fan base because then... Whoever it is that was following them, for example, like the ladies, like, who right. is this one guy that yeah, she's yeah. following? And they want to follow because mm. they want to see what's all Learning about. Instagram tricks now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, even, you remember um, Sampa the Great? Yeah. Uh, how Jada Pinkett deleted, listen to this, I don't know if you know the story. She deleted all her content on and, IG. And everyone she follows. And, and unfollowed everybody that she follows. Yeah. Then deleted everything. Then posted only one post and followed one person. Sampa the Great. Sampa wow. the Great. Okay. Now that's magic. 
And that's but that's dramatic though. I, I don't <laughs> want you to do over the ten million. No, but that's great. I feel like Sampa the Great is doing the most, guys. Like, tell me about it. Yeah, man. definitely. I I cannot wait for days where you just even just driving around. Los She's Anka getting a Grammy soon. I feel you know people are just bumping her music. I will tell you for a fact though. Um, I feel we're not giving her the flowers she that deserves. she truly deserves because, mm-hmm. of course, she is there. It's visible what she's doing, but are we playing her music? Are we really bumping her music in the clubs? Are we playing her music yeah. in some of these places? You know what I mean? Because mm. um, you can't have somebody who's doing so much and then they come home. And nobody knows who the hell she is. Not only that, but we're not playing her music, yeah, man. Like, man. It's, it's almost like we are not really helping uplift this person because I know just how crazy and hard it is to get your content up on some of these platforms, but she does it, make it look like it's just the easiest thing, things to do. Mm. So can we at least, you know, just raise the lady up? You know what I mean? She's here. She's in Zambia. And like, if she's going to jump on a yango, can we have people bump her music time right, and time again? So right. yeah, I feel like she really deserves, she, she deserves that college. If there's one, if there's one artist you'd like to work with that you haven't yet. Sample the great. <laughs> We could actually make that happen. Uh, I was speaking to Mag44, I think, two, three weeks ago mm-hmm. when she was in the USA. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? Um, I've been thinking about it, but I really feel like I want to do that. I want to work with Sampa the Great. I'd like to work with El Mukuka as well. Yeah. Um, who else? Yeah. Zambian artist? Doesn't matter. Anyone. Put it out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, right now, Zambia, definitely. Uh, Sampa the Great. Um, El Mukuka. I'm, I always love a great challenge. There's yeah. some songs I sent to El Mukuka. It's like, <laughs> okay, bro. Uh, this is a little too slow for me. <laughs> mm. So, yeah. And, and that's one thing that I have always respected about artists. And certain people always find it offensive when somebody says, this is not my type of music. We find like, why? This is a hit song, ABCD. But you always need to find a striking balance between the two crafts. Yeah. When you work on a song that I love, and let's say, for example, you're an artist as well and you love it, it will not stop you from promoting it because your heart is in it. Mm-hmm. But if you're just going to work with somebody for the sake of it just being a collaboration, it's just a collaboration. Mm. But you need to tap into each other's fan bases, yeah, each true. number's numbers. Right. And for me, <clears throat> that is what is fundamental about collaborations. Mm. You mentioned that you could actually win a Grammy. Do you know that the Grammys actually tweeted about something like exactly. last week? Exactly. Really? The yeah. Grammys. Yeah. What, what did they say about her? The Recording Academy yeah. wrote, and I quote, Rapper Sampa the Great reached a level of success unthinkable to most. Many viewed her as an avatar for her nation, Zambia. Yeah. The supremacy of artistic freedom wins out, and that's all she's concerned with as above, so below. I hope the title. The Grammys Congrats, posted man. that. I don't I don't Congrats, I don't sir. think I don't think we really actually truly comprehend the superstar the magnitude. No, we don't. That woman is. Yeah. Listen, it's 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 uh it's something that I think is growing uh, slowly, though it should be rapid, but we could be heading somewhere, but like, let's call it a spade a spade. Um, this year alone, I don't think, I, I'm producing music for global audiences. Mm. But in Zambia, this year alone, mm. I don't know if there's anybody that can surpass what Samba has done. <laughs> no, dude, you don't even need to think. No, but let's, let's, let's be think. honest. And, yeah. and that's the thing, you know, like at times people do not want to credit other people who are doing something because you're also doing it. Mm. It doesn't have to be like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're good, let me tell you, you're good. Period. And yep. it ends there. Mm-hmm. You get it. I lose nothing. Like, what's there for me to lose? Nothing. What's wrong with me crediting somebody? And yeah, we need to do that. Like, we need to help uplift other people. She's opening extra doors that some of us have opened already. But yeah. it's in a different dimension. I don't know if Sampa the Great is as popular as Roberto and J-Rocks in East Africa, for example. Yeah. Right? But is Roberto and J-Rocks that popular in, in certain America. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of these things, they need to work hand in hand. So you have someone who is doing well in a certain region. So why can we not say, okay, cool. Listen, Synergies. we're going to support you. Yeah. We're going to support you in these regions as well, where we feel if you tapped into this as well, your numbers are going to grow. And that's the way we need to work. Synergistically speaking. Not only that, bro. Yeah. Right now, she's introducing Zambia to so many of course. Uh, different countries and cultures. Yeah. If Roberto tomorrow goes to Australia yeah. and says, I'm from Zambia and I'm an artist. Thank you. They will pay attention to you because they'll be like, oh, wait, we actually know Sampa Thank and you. she's talented. And so for that Thank reason, you. we're going to give you a shot. Yes. Imagine if you're from Kazakhstan 
and they've never heard music from Kazakhstan and you're like, oh, I'm from Kazakhstan, I'm pretty good. They'll be like, yeah, no, you're yeah, not exactly, from there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a win for, for the Zambian music industry because yeah. now she has sort of set the bar. Exactly. For Man, this woman is on Barack Obama's playlist. Come on. Please. God damn, bro. Imagine <laughs> that. Yeah. Roberto, just in, in, in conclusion. No, it's want. not. Can we talk about business though? You've 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 spoken about you know money you've made, you've built houses. Yeah. And a lot of times we've seen artists who've come in the industry, make their money, get all excited, and then when that shine dies down, they also get broke. Yeah. What, like what? Zahara? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe. Okay. Dr. Mahinga? Oh, snap. Do- Dr. Ma- oh, Dr. Dr. Malinga. They actually had a fundraising thing last week. Yeah. You meant Dr. Malinga. 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 What did I say, Mahinga? Mahinga. <laughs> oh, my bad. Yeah. Oh, I, I, what, are, what, are you, what are you you putting money in to ensure that, you know, when the lights, the curtains close and the lights are off? Property. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. The so. same thing that Simon said you shouldn't buy. What property? <laughs> no, no, no. When starting out in life, ah, yeah, whatever I was saying, don't buy cars. <laughs> this nigga here was saying buy cars and yada yada yada. You didn't say cars. Um, I would say everybody's just got their own preference based on where they're coming from. Um, I, I would say property because I've seen the value. Okay. Um, in that, and it's something that we both have agreed on, um, mm. upon with my wife, and we just say, look, cool. This is the direction we're gonna go. And a few other things, of course. Mm. But I'd say property comes in tops because it's it's something that we know if we concentrated on it a certain certain period, we say, okay, cool. Within the next six, eight months, this is what we want to do. Can we build and it reaches up to a certain level, then we're good. So um of course I've I've had my honeymoon phase with money. There was, there was a time that I blew money like no man's business. Same here, bro. Yeah. So I've been it I've been through it. Um I'm not really when money comes these days, it's not something that, boom, just excites you. Where, like, someone can even tell, like, oh, okay. There are times when my wife would just be like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. A long time ago, when money comes in, she'd be like, you got paid. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely got paid. The smile like, is too big on your face, bro. Bro, like, I'll be yeah. like, listen, let's go to Manda Hill. And we just, like, <sighs> splurge. What shoes do you want? And she just get shoes, bags, and she'd be like, you've got money. I'm like, babe, just get what you want to get. That was me. Mm. But now... There's money in the account, and I'm just like at home. Pretend like you're, you're right. Yeah, I'm just in the studio. So rich stay rich by so. acting like they're broke. And she'll be like, yeah. So I will not buy groceries. Like, oh, okay, let's go. And then when we buy stuff, she's like, wait, so you have money? I'm like, yeah. So why are you so chilled? Have. Like I said. I yeah, no, no, I'm saying she'll be surprised that all yeah, you had money, but think, and but you were so chilled. You'd be like, yeah, but I'm watching the Z podcast. Of course, man. <laughs> 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 I think it also comes with maturity along the way, you know, yeah. like um, everybody goes through that honeymoon stage. Trust mm, me. If, mm. if somebody dangled a million quarter, in front of you right now, there are certain things that automatically you're thinking of you want to buy, mm. right? But after that one million quarter, if someone brought another 10 million quarter, your priorities change. Yeah. Then two months later, if someone brought another one million quarter, you're going to treat it differently from the first time that you received. Of course, absolutely. Exactly. Which is, I had this conversation with Switcher. Mm. He was telling me, you know, remember the food market? Yeah. He was telling me of a, of a well-known business person who blew about... A, a, 280,000 kwacha. Oh, at the club last wow. weekend, yeah. At the club. When? Last week? Yeah. Wait, just within? Yeah. yeah. Oh, was that cartels? Or uh, cartel. Somebody yeah. spent about 250 yeah. cheats? Uh-huh. So, yeah. you know people with money. Mm-hmm. I know people with money. Like, real money. I mean, we raised 160,000 in five minutes last week, so. Yeah. What, have, you, what time are you guys doing that for me? <laughs> <laughs> You've got property, bro. I, I've never really uh. seen people that, who have actually worked for money and that have money splurge like that. And but so that always that oh, second. Maybe he's got extra change. So I don't know, but then that just I don't know that just that that that's a level of rich me. as well. So rich is the key word there. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I've seen Chris Brown, Asha in his prime will talk about I would leave fifty grand in a club just like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, they do. Yeah, and we've seen MC Hammer go broke. My point exactly. So it's about your level and planning, man. A lot of a lot of artists, I think, um, get excited along the way and we we suffer from <laughs> uh, fear of missing out we would rather spend money to look the look yeah than save up to just be stable in life and that sort of thing um someone would rather go and buy whatever whatever it is in a club just to look like okay yeah you know i'm happening that sort of thing 
forgetting that when you get home, do you have Bread. certain necessities, you know? So it, it, it also boils down to the company you keep because if you're around a circle of friends that are also excited, they're the ones that push you to, you know, constantly buy and that sort of thing. And for me, that's what I've done. When I go out, it's for a specific cause and specific reason. I just don't go out. I'd rather I buy a drink, I drink from home. Mm-hmm. I have my Hennessy. One bottle can take me two weeks and I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. Not hey, the minute you go out, boom, this and that. Yeah, I'm the same, man. Yeah. I, Shut I up. No, the out. fuck you're not. I when, oh, when about going uni. out, yeah. yeah. yeah about going, okay, cool. I rarely go out. Yeah. 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 I don't I don't think we've ever bumped into each other. Mm. Yeah. Events. Usually when I go out, it's one of two things. Uh yeah. for probably family chill. Then maybe same. afterwards you pass through a club for like an hour or two, then go home. And oh, bes- I'm getting paid to go out. And, and besides when you get married, yeah? And you Elvin? What about me? How often do you go out? I, I don't Every two days. To look, for food. <laughs> to look for food. Oh, wait. Maybe that was the wrong question. How many people do you invite home? To my house? Yeah. Oh, man. I, mean, I knew you were asking the wrong question. <laughs> and besides, <laughs> when, you, when you get married, you become your wife's pet. What? Don't, no, don't, don't act macho because she's not here. No, 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 no. I don't think anybody I'm, becomes I'm to a pet whenever, to anybody. So. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me don't make me say shit now. Don't make me say shit. No, no, no. Come on. Just being honest, I can go out like when I want. I just I rarely go out. It's just my you just have to. Dude, between 2010 and 2017, 18, I was out every weekend and just yeah. yeah. How long have you been married? Seven years. Also, someone's the same because him is six. Yeah, he got married in 2015. Yeah, me 2016. Right. Yeah. Got married in 2015. Country late. How's that going though? interesting yeah yeah um would you do it if it, like if i don't not? i don't ever want to get married again i'd rather stay married just like this no but if you could rewind of course with my wife yes 100%. to the same person 100 percent. 100 would you think he, about he looks, it he looks worried like okay you know why he's asking this question uh, even three days with a chick is too long for him so yeah well, what, what do you mean like like what, staying with a girl for yeah. three yeah no no yeah no nah. <laughs> No. So commitment is an issue for you? It's not commitment. Uh-huh. I can commit, but I like my space. So are I you, don't know a, how practical... Are you, rom- are you a romantic person or you are a hit and pass? So let me, let me answer your question this way. Uh-huh. I'm a pleaser. So if the girl is romantic, by virtue of her being romantic, I, I follow suit because if she likes flowers, I'm going to buy flowers. Not because I enjoy it, but because she does. Do you get what I mean? But me, naturally, no, I'm not. But I want to know what she likes, and I do that. Does that make any sense? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I wouldn't say then you are into it, into it. You you are doing it for the sake of of just her. Doing. Yes. Yeah. But then why why are you not being there the same way that person is there for you? No, I'm being there for her. No, you are pleasing that person ma- via you material. Did say he's a materials. No, again, I, I just mentioned flowers. It could be anything. That's material stuff. No, I, listen. So here's the thing. My love language is acts of service. Okay. Tiny little things like she's at work, I go, I pick up her car, I fill up her car with gas, drop it back off, right. run her tub, cook for her, etc., etc. Have you met a woman that has satisfied you? How? Like sexually? No, everything, the whole nine years, 360. No. No. So you're still searching for... I'm not searching, that's the thing. Are you... And because I feel like are when you, you search, for, are you available for it? I am. I feel like when you search is when you meet swindlers because then they know you are looking, you're actively looking. But and if I pretend. bump into you, yeah, if I if if I bump into, it has to be organic. Yeah. The biggest problem that I have is being in the same space with somebody mm-hmm. for too long. I, I I told him the same thing when my parents visit me yeah. or when I visit them. I can't stay with them for more than three days. I have to go to an yeah. Airbnb. Yeah, it's my parents. I love them to death, but I can't share my space with somebody for that long. Okay. So if ever there is a crazy scenario where I'm in a relationship, but we live apart. Not because I want to do any dirt, mm-hmm. but because I just like, I want to walk into my house. I want to take 32 sheets if I want to. Mm-hmm. I want to scratch my nuts. I want to sit. I want to watch TV without anybody having to bother me. Wow. Because one thing that I've realized, and I think it's, it's um, <laughs> Patricia. What? What did I say? Scratch your nuts. <laughs> yeah, we, we all scratch our nuts, don't we? I was trying to keep it in, but Brian. No. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the only one who sees scratching their nuts. Am I? Oh, scratch oh, our nuts, man. Come on, you don't. You do it all the time. What is it a hobby? 
Is you you do that to Vusi right now. What? Look at Vusi right now, scratching his nuts. Are you are you married, bro? So wait, so no, okay, so so just so, so okay, let's just pause for a second. So run me through this. This <laughs> is just this, Roberto. This, this nuts yeah. moments. So what is it? Is it is it like a, it's a tiny a, a position that you kind of like just look forward to when you get home? Like yes, yes. yes. Well, let me get home and right now. Scratch my nuts. I, I, it's what you yeah, do it in public. You do it in public. Well, not even actually scraping, but while I'm having a conversation, I'm actually find myself craving. What? Yeah, definitely. It's nothing sexual. It's nothing sexual. <laughs> no, but it's, it just like relaxes you. So I could be watching TV and subconsciously I start scratching my nuts. You know what? We need to go. No, wait. <laughs> we're, we're having an important conversation here. But you're looking shocked, like an you, important nuts like, conversation. Like, no, this is, this is I'm, something I'm, new. I'm, 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 of course, it's not new. I'm just looking at the fact that you guys are talking about doing that. Publicly, no, like, like, I never said publicly. He said publicly. publicly. You you do it publicly I several times. And some of the people. Nobody, but he's a South African, no, no, so I he gets a I pass. What Roberto means is we're discussing this publicly. Yeah. What discussing? What, what, what are you talking about doing publicly? Discussing no. or scratching nuts? The act itself. No, I don't do publicly. Scratching nuts. Yes. No, I don't publicly. do publicly. publicly. No, he does. About you don't do it publicly. Yeah. No, what in my house, age? huh? What happens when you have the age at the No, mall? but you have to do it in a strategic manner. No, you, you have to like, be yeah, strategic you, you, about yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Hand. I was going to give an example saying I just... Yeah, no, but I was not talking about an itch. No, 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 no. I wasn't talking no. about an itch. I was talking about like, just like, you, you're relaxed. Yeah, yeah, you're relaxed. <laughs> Are you guys aware we're actually talking about something this sensitive? Like, <laughs> Okay, Elton, you were saying? Let's, let's keep but it. But anyway, yes. So I was saying, I don't know if ever I would ever find a person who is that open-minded. To say, okay, fine, we could live together, but we could have a separate apartment. You know what I mean? Where mm. you could have your time out. Okay. I could stay home with the kids. You could go to the apartment this weekend with your friends. Okay. Because you're still an individual at the end of the day. We are one, but you're still an individual. Right. You still need your own space. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? No, I get you. Yeah. I get you. I hear you. And I feel like it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very far-fetched Look. idea. I, I, I get that. Yeah. yeah. And that's a big part of why I figured, I don't know, conventional relationships might not be for me. Okay. Hangas. Yeah. No, I get you. I get you 100%. And, and it's, it's like the way people manage long-distance relationships and others cannot manage long-distance yeah. relationships. Right. So it's, it's really just about who he can somebody, manage. Yeah, you, who he can manage a long-distance relationship. Yeah, I can manage that. Of course. Yeah. I can't. Three days is, is too much for me. Like for me, a long-distance relationship was perfect. Every time my wife would leave, uh, when we were dating, every time she would leave town, she knew it. That's it. We're broken up. <laughs> until she I, gets back. Until she gets back. But why is that though? I, I cannot, like when I'm attached to you, I need you in my space. So if you've broken up, do you attach to someone else though? I used to. In, in those? I used to. You used to? Yeah. And she'll find out. She knew. I want you to, I want you wow. to search on YouTube. There's this clip by... Um, I've grown out of that though. Yeah, that's a good thing. There's this clip by this comedian, I think he died, called Patrice O'Neill, uh-huh. where he was saying... Um, is that the fat guy? Yeah, the fat guy. Yeah. Where you, were, you, you know what, Martin? Where he was saying, as men, it's difficult for us to keep liking you once we love you. Mm, okay. Uh, has, have you ever faced that? I think so. I think so. So he goes and he breaks it down as to why. Because then your wife, especially when she wants to be your friend, when she genuinely d- tries too hard to be your friend... Mm-hmm. And doesn't give you that space to be who you want to be is where the problem starts. Yeah, and that's I, why I don't. That's that's why I need to speak to you guys to yeah. figure out how you did it. Yeah. So so initially it was for me it was it was really really tough. Um, I, I wasn't so much of an open person towards other people. Mm. So if I'm confiding in you, it is you. Mm. You get it. So it was so difficult for me. It's, of course. Our relationship was uh, on, off, on, off, that sort of thing. But eventually, I kind of like just grew to understand the type of person she is and she knew who I was, that sort of thing. And now, um, of course, she know, she even knows it. Every time like she's going for work, I'm just like, I'm going to miss you. There's still that element in me that always wants to have her around because like she's your closest friend. You want mm. to talk to her more mm-hmm. often, that sort of thing. Whatever happens, the first person I call, I'm, I'm talking to her. So... Back in the days, I had to find means and ways of just really just getting rid of the situation of, okay, every time she leaves town for two months, and then that's it. The relationship is over. But now that's changed. <laughs> I'm a married man. It's interesting, man. Roberto, it's been, it's been real? 
Thank you. Unless so you want to go for another hour, Elson. Oh yeah, there's a lot. Another thing that I wanted to ask, <laughs> right? Because what my dad used to tell me, wow, mm-hmm. is when it comes to how much you speak to with a, with a, a girlfriend or a wife, mm-hmm. you need to be ex- extremely cognizant. I'll give you a couple examples. So he used to say, if you sell tires, your wife needs to know you sell tires. She does not need to know specifics. Right. She doesn't need to know who you buy your tires from and who you sell your tires to. Yeah. Yeah. That's not on her business. Number one, can you provide? Mm-hmm. Number two, you sell tires and then that's it. The minute that she knows every intricate detail of what you do, you're setting yourself up because so many times when people get divorced, politicians, business people, and they've declared that we only have two houses. And now suddenly when there's a divorce and she says, I want half. Now she goes to court and says, that motherfucker is lying, doesn't have two houses, he's got 20, and here is where those houses are. And now suddenly people are looking at, oh, like, oh. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah, I get you. Well, so do you, do you agree with that, that despite being in a marriage, there Not are certain things. all sources of income. Yeah, there are certain <laughs> things that you keep to yourself. This question is a trap. I know, right? <laughs> Man, listen, when my wife is watching this, I want, I want to have peaceful sleep. What are you trying to do, man? <laughs> what exactly are you trying to... I, like, I want to know, been, bro. You have been looking for a way for me to have issues at home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I understand where you're coming from yeah. and I get what you're coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, I, have, I have friends that have talked to me about such things. Like, mm. man, don't tell your wife you've got this, this and that. Um, but maybe it just goes down to the type of friendship you have. Mm-hmm. With your spouse, um, yeah. Of of course, valid reasons why sometimes someone will say, you know, what, you need to put this in this one's name. You need to put this in that person's name. A B C D A B C D A B C D. Which I, to some extent, I would understand. But for me, at present, I wouldn't say it is something that I have really looked at and say, yeah, I need to, you know, um, hide this, hide that, hide that, and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, we. Yeah, we've, we've, we've had encounters where stuff like that has been said mm. to me. And I'm sure 100% there are people that she knows that have probably told her the very same thing. You know, mm. like, you know, you need to have your own property in your own mm. name, mm. ABCD. Because it's something that a lot of people will talk about, especially when they know that you're married right. and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I've, I've heard it a couple of times. Because you know how we know that Bill Gates was smashing an intern, right? Oh, okay. You know how we, <laughs> you know, how we know that, right? Um, tell me. The wife. Of course. It's, it's, it's Melinda Gates because she got pissed off. And these guys have been together for how many, like 20 something years? Close to 40. Close to 40 years. Yeah. So just like, you're, just like you're saying. Who snitched on Bill Clinton, by the way? Wasn't it, wasn't it the sperm on Monica's dress? I don't know. Damn. I don't think I really. Well, listened to a podcast on that the other day. Yeah. I'm yet to finish it though. Mm. Yeah. About what? About the how, Monica Bill The Clinton. Monica Lewinsky thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll forever be known for that. Yeah, true. All right, we need to go now. The producers are looking at we don't, us. We don't need to do shit. <laughs> <laughs> Roberto, it's been real. I like how, so you've, how you hold your liquor, man. Like, the amount you've taken and uh, you're still talking to us straight. A lot of people would have been talking trash by now. And oh. revealing all their secrets and oh. sources of income. Did you see this clip uh, of Mac G when he was speaking to Deleuze? And Deleuze was giving him weed and uh, oh, alcohol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it. And the guy got and then, and the, fucked up. And they still haven't yeah. published that episode, eh? <laughs> the guy got so <laughs> fucked up. He could not string two sentences together. No kidding. Oh, they, man. I need to check it out. They went to record an episode of a podcast and it's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy. been real, man. Like, no, thank you, man. I didn't think we'd have this much fun with you because you always look so... Uptight. Uptight, reserved. Really? Yeah. Actually, but the energy I has have, been amazing, though. I have heard people who I think have that misconception about me and they say you've got to stick up your ass kind of thing like you're yeah stuck like up, yeah? I'm, I'm i'm a self-centered person and so the thing is if you don't talk to me i you don't i don't talk to you yeah i'm that type of person mm. but when you get to know me and we're able to conversate trust me we can talk about stuff and i'll just yeah because i'm not just also wants to go three hours with you today yeah and you know the craziest thing wow i'm leaving yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the craziest thing is before you came i was speaking to kalenga and i was like i really don't know much about this dude except yeah. the song you know what he okay. said to me? Yeah. This is going to be a conversation between you and Roberto or just be oh, that seated. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Yeah, coming in. Kind of so like just be uh, chipping in every 20, 30 minutes, but look yeah. at you taking over the show now. <laughs> kind of like uh, Makitu. The Makitu episode. I was sitting there with a mouthful of teeth. 
Yeah, um, he was a third wheel there. Yeah. Damn. Who? J Rocks. Yeah, he was just stuck the fuck up though. Damn. It's been a great episode. To the next one next week. My name is K Plus. Remember how we we're talking about you need to introduce yourself all the time? We didn't do that in the intro. Who introduced you? Who? who did you say? What you say? Remember how when Roberto says he mentions his name because somebody in Mexico won't know. I need to stop we this other guy, the other guy shit. Yeah, exactly my point. <laughs> we did not introduce ourselves when it's That's my right? camera. Hey. Look, stop laughing so hard. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. I'm just, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just remember something. Yeah. I think I remember watching an episode of you guys and you was complaining, say, I'm not the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> That is Elson sexing. Okay. Thing. Shut the fuck up with that sexing <laughs> shit. So you know people have been calling me that. God damn. That's a good Wait. Thing. Speaking of what people have been doing, I remember on the episode you and I had, we asked people to go to Comba's Comba. page. Oh, <laughs> so, nice. so, so we asked, you know Comba, right? Hmm. He's MTN. the MD for MTN. Oh, um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I asked, so he's a good friend of mine. So I asked him, dude, you need to come on the podcast, and he's been. Dodging basically him. waffling is not giving me a straight answer so i said on the podcast i said everybody who's listening go to comba's page yeah under every picture that he posts comment saying we want you on that podcast literally in hours his account this was guy got flooded. spammed and then he called and he tagged us like what the fuck is going on <laughs> <laughs> shit i like our listeners so yeah, they're amazing. ladies and gentlemen elson is my name sexington uh my name is elson how do you say it? My mm. name is Roberto. Yeah. My name is Elson. My um my Instagram is changamire underscore one. Is there anything else that I need to put out there? My phone number? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just the Instagram. Are you on Facebook? I am on Facebook. Oh, okay. So yeah. what's your Facebook? But then my shit. People can't is it is it a page or no, it no, it's a, it's a, I feel like you're you're full of yourself when it becomes a page. It's just my personal account. No, no, no. At least So activate. Elson, E L S O N. Activate an, uh, a page. See, what I hate about that, and I'll wow. be honest with you. You know what? Yeah, bye-bye. What I hate about that is the process of growing it. So I never want the process of going to my page and I see only 10 people. Because then that fucks with my ego. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. I'm, I'm committing now. Uh-huh. Open your account, uh, your page, uh-huh. and I'll gladly help you grow your numbers. Once you clock 10,000, I'm going to be like, okay, cool, my work is done. Deal? I'm checking your phone number. No problem. We are doing this. Yeah, hundred cool. percent. Let's do it. All right, gentlemen, ladies. Um, Kalenga has left. I think he's going to change his pads. <laughs> Till the next episode. <laughs>